What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Kind of Funny X Cast, your home for all things Xbox here at Kind of Funny. I'm one of your hosts, Snowbike Mike, and of course, I am joined by my two incredible, illustrious, and downright destiny grinding awesome guys, my dude, Paris Lilly. Paris, what is good with you this week? How are you, my friend? Oh, it's been a great week. Um, I had the chance, along with Gary Witta, we had a mini X cast on Tuesday where uh, we hosted Kind of Funny Games Daily. And while it was a great experience, I, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to be able to do it. I have been shaking my fist the past two days going, why wasn't all this gaming news when I was hosting? I had to literally scramble that's, right before the show. That's the true test of Games Daily, though, Paris. <laughs> that's your true test of hosting a show when absolutely fuck all is happening. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's like I'm looking today because, you know, Fran and, and Tim were recording this on Thursday. I'm like, they're, they're like, we have eight news topics. I'm like, God, I, I wish I just had one. Like one news topic, but it was a great experience and it was awesome to do it with Gary. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, so it was fun. We have so to far. do that combo again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great one, Paris. You did an incredible job at the hosting seat. It was a whole lot of fun. Remember, April 20th edition of Kind of Funny Games Daily was hosted by Paris Lilly and my guy, Gary Witta, the rogue one. A little Kind of Funny X Cast takeover. But Gary, how have you been? I've missed you. I know you've been working hard all week. But have you taken some time to game just a little bit for yourself? I mean, just just a little bit. I uh, I haven't been in Los Santos uh, quite so much the past week, as you know. Uh, I've been in there almost every day. I guess just because like life and work has been catching up with me. I haven't had as much time to game, just in general. But still, still coming back to it takes two, which I'm telling you, it's going to be in the game of the year conversation. I'm telling you, no doubt about it. Um, uh, Rebecca Valentine, you know our friend. Uh, posted some stuff from it today on Twitter and said, if this was if this game was like a, a part of a major franchise, we would all be going crazy about how amazing this game is. But because it's like a smaller game where a lot of people are just like um, are missing it. But if it was something you were seeing like a God of War or whatever, uh, or a Final Fantasy game, people would just be going crazy about it. Um, but I'm hoping that just on its own merits, people do find it and notice that everyone's talking about it right now come the end of the year. Uh, when when the game of the year conversation uh, starts happening, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be up there. And I also just picked up this thing for my phone. Um, you know, Hot Shots Golf. You ever play any Hot Shots Golf on oh, PlayStation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the people that make that, a company called Clap Hands, um, have now brought a uh, a, a game uh, called Clap Hands Golf, which seems to be just Hot Shots Golf in orbit name uh, to Apple Arcade. So I've got that on my phone now. I'm going to try some some cartoon golf uh, in the near future. I hope. Gary, what are you? are the master of the links. You know that, Gary? The spring sun is coming out. The fairways are getting ready. You got the driving range calling your name. And so I love whenever you bring up golf because you know you get me excited to go out there and actually play some. But, uh, Gary, let's continue to beat that drum for It Takes Two, right? Let's not forget that and Hitman 3 when we get to those Game of the Year discussions because we've had a good start to the year. And usually we kind of forget about those games early in January through the spring months. And we really focus on the big hitters later on. But let's make sure to bring that up, Gary, because I love every moment of It Takes Two. And I hope that a lot of people get to try it. And we'll continue to talk about that. But these two are great. But somebody else is way cooler. If you're tuning in on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, you've seen that we got a fourth chair today. This week is a special one. I have one of the lords from the realm of the Iron Lords podcast, friend of the show, the gaming ninja, the man not telling you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. An all-around awesome guy, Lord Cognito, is joining us this week. Elsie, welcome in. I'm so happy that you could join us and hang out with me and the crew here on XCast. Truly, truly humbled. You guys are lords of what you do. I'm happy to be in the realm of the kind of funny X cast. This is an absolute honor, pleasure. Man, it's fun, man. Gaming is is at an all time high. There's a lot of great news and good things to discuss. Absolutely psyched to be here. Thank you for the invite. So happy to have you. And I know these two are really eager to talk some video games with you. And most importantly, you know, I reached out to you because I love your insights. I love your intelligence. I love all of the fun that you share, just like I do, and I know these two guys do, about the passions of play and the video games and how it brings us all together. And you and your crew over at the Iron Lords podcast always make me feel that way. Whenever I tune in and watch you guys, whether it be on social media or on the show, I get energized, I get excited, and I love sharing that enthusiasm. And so I knew I had to reach out to you and just be like, hey, will you come on and hang out with us? Because I really want to talk with you. 
And a lot of people are probably saying to themselves, Snowbike, Mike, I didn't catch him on podcast unlocked. I haven't been to the realm. What the heck is all about LC? So I got some fun, get to know your questions to roll Story. down the street. And then I, I got a fun one for these two guys. Cause I know I'm going to get a good one out of Gary Witta for the intro of the show, but mainly why don't you tell me the crew here and everybody watching and listening to the kind of funny X cast all about the iron Lords podcast and all about the team and everything you do, because it's more than just a podcast. Right. Yeah. Well, basically, you know, it's four lifelong friends for the most part. Three of us grew up in the South Bronx, you know, and one, one from the, the, the rough streets of West Virginia. So like the Lord at it. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, we, we grew up together and uh, gaming was a huge part of our life. You know, for for me personally, growing up in the South Bronx, not the greatest environment. And, you know, King is family and Sovereign's family. And basically it was a situation that I got to I got to salute Mama Ka because she allowed 10 to 15 crazy adolescents in my house just to play video games. And now that I look at back at it, I have such so much of an appreciation. So basically what used to happen is every Saturday, everyone would come over. We'd watch. We'd play games. We'd watch the fights. We'd play sports. But it was always gaming, you know, and shout out to King. Like he would get a lot of the import systems ahead of time in New York City. A lot of the, um, you know, the imports at the time, whether it be Xbox, PlayStation, whatever, they'd come out a year before. So a lot of times we get a chance to check out the new tech and stuff like that so gaming saturdays became a central hub for us and it just literally expanded into kind of what we do now so basically lord addict a, a good friend of mine who i game with and i got him into destiny i tricked him into destiny paris i tricked him into yeah, nice, <laughs> playing nice. destiny and, and he became one of my you know closest friend online and we would have these xbox live party chats and he'd say hey what we're doing is a podcast and like we should do it and me being old, I'm like, ah, it's for you young bucks. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not in the podcast game, but he just kept gnawing at me. And eventually, you know, we started, a, it, it became a Destiny podcast initially. It was an Iron Wars podcast, a Destiny podcast. And people did like it, but they were like, hey, we like it, but we don't like Destiny that much. And we like when you guys talk about the other stuff. <laughs> so it expanded into a multi-platform you know, obviously Xbox is a huge preference of ours. So that gets discussed a lot. But we do talk about Nintendo Switch. We do talk about PlayStation, all the latest news. And I think ultimately for us, uh, Snowbike, like, it's just bringing gamers together. Because at the end of the day, you know, for where I'm from, you know, it's one of those situations where gaming was kind of not, it was kind of frowned upon. Or, or you were kind of clowned to be a gamer. And for us, I look at this community now. I know everyone's with the tribalism, but it's like, if you pick up a controller, me and you have a bond. You, you're my guy, you know what I mean? Or girl, and, and, and that's how I look at it. So that's our safe space to talk about games, have fun, keep it positive. And the last thing we like to do is we like to celebrate those in the community. We just like to celebrate the content creators, people in the media, the developers. We've been very fortunate to have a lot of great people on Iron Wants podcast, whether it be uh, Bill Stillwell, Jason Ronald. I mean, the list is pretty, pretty, we're pretty humble, you know, that people come and, and come on our show. And we just try to make everybody feel welcome. You are, we, ba we basically designate you a lord in the realm once you come in because you're a lord at what you do. I love hearing that. And I'm so glad. And I hope a lot of all, all the best friends in kind of funny, go check it out. We'll give the big plug at the end, but this is just something I wanted to bring you on. And I wanted to share the gaming enthusiasm with you and all of our viewers around the globe, because you and your crew are so much fun to watch and listen to. And you guys are incredible on social media. And there's some more questions I got to ask, but there's one thing. I mean, if people don't get it, if they don't get the hype, if they don't get the fun. I mean, I just need you to tell everybody what you and the crew Call Lord Phil Spencer. What's his oh. special name? And the moment they hear it, they're going to be sold. The moment you hear it, you're into it. All credit goes to King because he started this. He's been on the Phil train from day one. And I never forget when he said it. he's like, no, no, like, we don't call him Phil Spencer. As Lord Phil Dominus Maximus Aurelius Spencer. So he like went into this whole Spartacus title bag. And I'm like, okay. And it just stuck. And people just started calling him Phil Dominus. And it, it's just this hilarious thing. You know, so it's just one of those things. We like to have fun with it, you know, with, with the execs and things like that. It's just gaming in general. But yeah, that is definitely one of our famous sayings we have like lord lingo that's definitely one that always comes up in iowa's podcast that is the one that gets me smiling from ear to ear and grinning every time i hear it and i love it so much let's get to some fun questions you actually brought up one that i haven't written down but let's talk about it you talked about saturday gaming with you and your friends friday nights saturdays coming together and gathering around the tv to play some games what was a special moment or a special game that you remember that you always think back on fondly well, 
personally, it's two. Personally, for me, I was a Sega kid growing up. So the arcade scene was huge for me. And Shinobi was like my dream game. Like when that game hit, it, it changed my world. Like I was just like, wow, what is this? And I remember as a kid, I'm like, I'm going to own that game. I'm going to own it. And I ended up getting the arcade upright version of Shinobi. It's in the house. It is a, a cherished, you know, possession of mine. So that's the first thing. As far as the Saturdays and the gaming, you know, it basically came down to to Halo, man. I rem- I never forget it. I mean, it it, it took it, they made kids from the Bronx learn how to do networking and get Ethernet <laughs> cable, and know what a router is, and then we went, you know, parents appreciate like we went to these like stores and everyone had to get a TV, and you know, it was just it changed the game because again, split screen was one thing. But then when we realized, OK, you can have your own real estate as long as we do this setup, the I mean, hang them high. The, I mean, blood gulch, the, the hours that just everyone staying there for hours just playing these games and team deathmatch. Halo was transformative for us, like never forget it. Then obviously, when Xbox evolved into online and everyone gets old and everyone gets married, we are still able to congregate through Xbox Live on that. But yeah, definitely Halo back in the day. Tremendous. I love that. You know, me and my friends shared a very special bond over Halo 2 in the early days of Xbox Live. And I'll never forget running the Ethernet cords all around the house, plugging them in, hoping it worked, trying to figure out mom's credit card number so we could all make our own names. You had to have your own names. You weren't allowed to just be, you know, your friend's name plus the one next to him as a guest. You had to have your own name. And so I've told that story before, but I love hearing that because that brings a smile to my face. And I, I saw Paris you know, nodding his head about the Shinobi arcade there. Paris, what the heck is that? Do I need to know about it? Well, Shinobi, now, <laughs> please correct me if I'm wrong here, Lord Cognito, but he was a ninja, correct? Yes. 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 And, he was a ba- and he was a badass. That was, I remember that in the arcades, and it was on the Sega Master System way back in the day. So, yeah, that, that's another just, just legacy. But when you talk Sega and you said arcades, I immediately thought Virtua Fighter. That was the oh. first thing that popped in my head. I'm like, man, back in the day, we used to, you know, me and my buddies, we go to the arcade, you're putting your quarter down, you have oh. to get, you know, you get your favorite fighter and, you know, whoever wins. And then obviously that morphed into Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and all that stuff back then. But yeah, man, that, those were the good old days. Oh, and and, and I, I'll say one thing for me, as far as like the, the Saturday afternoon, get with your buddies gaming, my memory is Tecmo Bowl. We used to have Tecmo Bowl tournaments all weekend <laughs> always like like literally i remember when when jordan hit the shot over elo was in the middle of a tecmo bowl tournament we actually stopped to watch that fourth quarter i'll, I'll just never forget that in that setting but it was gaming it was gaming that brought us all together for that moment but yeah yeah just Absolutely those are right. good days before online and all this <laughs> fancy stuff these kids have now but you had to earn it if you wanted to play some games. Preach, preach, brother. Yeah, those are the days, man. Again, that that game. Oh my, our Bo Jackson and those guys were like unstoppable. And oh man, the, the, the <laughs> tournaments, the the, the, the yes. trash talking. Yes. It, it was crazy, man. What an era. What an era. I missed that so much. Gary, would I want to get you involved, Rogue One? If I handed you a fistful of quarters, what's the arcade cabinet you're taking me over to? Are we talking about Sega or just more in general? Anything, Gary. I mean, I, me personally, I like ski ball, but I don't think you can count that. But like ski ball is kind of tight, Gary, just so you know, ski ball is cool if you say it. Let me let me try and keep it with Sega because otherwise, you know, <laughs> we'll be we'll be here all day. First of all, to the point about <laughs> Shinobi, Shinobi is an interesting, and correct me if I'm wrong, because obviously there are, there are bigger Shinobi experts in the house. This is just something I'm vaguely aware of. When you were talking earlier about how you played it in the arcade and you really wanted to bring it home. I thought that was going to be a different story because, as I recall, the arcade version of Shinobi and the home versions are actually really different games. Yes. Like, the home version isn't just an adaptation of the arcade game. They basically remade – it still has a ninja, but, like, it's not a conversion of the arcade version. So I wonder how many people brought home the Genesis or the Master System version back in the day thinking they were going to get a port of the arcade game, but they actually got a really different game. Um, That's right, right? They're different games. Yeah, I hate to interrupt you because you're on fire right now. Because what it is was <laughs> that realization as a kid when I had the mass system, I realized I'm like, this is not a one to one conversion. Yes. <laughs> this is not the same game. I, I literally realized the difference between the arcade board and a port very early. So continue wow. again. That, that was literally my frustration. And in, in, in the mass system, it had theirs. Genesis had theirs. A couple other versions, but it never was quite up to snuff. 
and thus it was my mission to get that arcade upright version. But I mean, I, I, grew, I grew up in the 80s when I would play games in the arcade and they then they would sell you the home version and the home version, just because again, the home computers back then yeah, didn't terrible. have the same kind of hardware yeah. that the coin ops did. It was never as good a version. But again, the interesting thing about Shinobi was it wasn't even the same game. They didn't even try to convert the arcade game. They just basically took the idea of a ninja named Shinobi and redesigned. It was still like a platform fighting game, but they, they don't really have a lot in common. I just thought it's an interesting kind of outlier in the uh, annals of kind of arcade game history and that the home version wasn't really the home version of the, of the arcade game. Um, no, I, in terms of my own history with it, like, let me think Sega. I, I liked it. I really liked the period when Sega kind of went crazy and started doing shit like Afterburner and Galaxy yeah. Force. And they put yeah. you in those big, remember the G-Lock cabinet? Yes, yep, they put you yep. in that sphere that were like, could rotate you like 360 degrees. I like, I like stuff like that because I think what was happening was you were kind of witnessing at the time, kind of the last death throes of the arcade industry. Like no one really goes to arcades to play video games anymore. No one really makes you know, Sega and Konami. All these companies kind of out of the coin-op business now. Um, because what happened, of course, was the home consoles not only caught up, but actually now surpassed them, right? Surpassed you can play, them. you know, a, a, you know a, a, an Xbox or even an iPhone is way more powerful than any arcade game we ever played back in the day. And I think as they as the, as the the arcade companies started to see the home computers and the home consoles closing that gap. They were like, we got to add more bells and whistles, like shit you could never get at home, like Preach. a cabinet that throws you around or a light gun and all these kind of gimmicks that you got to go to the arcade to play these games. And so and it was kind of, it was almost like the last days of the Roman empire, like, like utter debauchery before it all collapses. Like we got to go all in to try and keep people coming to the arcades because people are thinking, why not just stay home and play the game? And I don't have to put quarters in and play as much as I want. It's like, well, you can't have to come to the arcades to get thrown around like a rag doll in our cabinet or whatever. And that was like kind of the last attempt to keep arcade games and coin operated games relevant but obviously it didn't work in the long run because you know they're you know those games are as extinct as the dinosaurs now you're right you're right i mean yeah. that's exactly what it was continue Pat. i'm sorry no 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 i'm sorry to interrupt you i was just going to go back to something gary was touching on when you were mentioning the the whole difference between you know playing it in the arcade and and the home version one of my most depressing and disappointing moments in gaming history was Pac-Man. I was, as a kid, loved Pac-Man. Used to early, you know, take my lunch money before I go to school, play Pac-Man. That's how much I was into Pac-Man as a kid. Um, and I remember when the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man came out. Oh, infamous. I was, yeah, I was so excited to get it, begged my parents to get it. They got it for me, plugged it in. And yeah, just <laughs> utter, utter disappointment. Yeah, I, 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 I think the version. story behind that one was they had no time to make it, right? They had yeah. to rush it out to get it in the stores by Christmas or whatever. Yeah. I think that whole game was made in like a week or two weeks or some outrageous amount of time. Yeah, notoriously one of the worst arcade ports ever. But just in general, I'm, I'm glad that kids <laughs> don't have to put up with this anymore. Like yeah. it was so, it was always so depressing to play a game in the arcades with all the dedicated hardware and it was so expensive and you, you're excited about the concepts of bringing the you know the coin op hit home to your nes or whatever but it just was like the, the poor nes or the masters or even the genesis whatever so they, they just they couldn't match yeah. what they are you, you always knew you were playing an inferior mm -hmm. version and this is why to go back to an earlier comment this is why we live in the golden age of gaming right now it's never been better because you can you can put a thousand arcade roms you know, on your Raspberry Pi or whatever and play perfectly emulated versions yeah. of these games on, you know, whatever computer or console you have at home. Or you can go get, like, I've been working my way through, like, Capcom Arcade Stadium, whatever it's called, the latest thing for the mm -hmm. Switch, and they do these beautiful things where you can kind of, you know, move through all the different... I've been playing, like, 1942 and Commando uh, nice. and, uh, you know, just all the, you know, just all these classes. And again, and they are the arcade versions. Mm. And it's so nice to and finally, finally, like, three or four decades later, we can we can actually play the arcade games at home. But I just remember, like, I never learned my lesson one game after another. This one's going to be just like the yes. arcades because it's yeah, nowhere, yes. near, as good. nowhere near as good. Way. Same way. It was <laughs> so just terrible. Yeah. Now, now Miss Pac Man, Miss Pac Man, though, on the 2600 was, I mean, obviously it wasn't as good as the arcade, but it was definitely an improvement over the original Pac Man on the 20. That was, that was just god awful. I Horrible. Feel you. I feel your yeah. pain, Harris. <laughs> definitely, brother. Yeah, it was it was a time where the arcade definitely it was almost you would go there to see how the technology would evolve, and you would see, they were so advanced ahead at mm -hmm. the time. So yeah, it's cool. Like what like what Gary is saying. Like now that we're at this stage where we no longer have to deal with that, kids do not have to deal with that disappointment anymore. No. 
They definitely. Don't. I do. I do miss it though. I do miss going oh, to I do arcades. Too. Like I have yeah. so many fond memories as a kid. I grew up in London. We used to go all the big arcades were in the West End of London, you know, kind of the theater district and where the, all the big cinemas are and stuff. And all the big arcades were there as well. And like going on a week, and my dad would take me. We'd go to the arcades. And I'd have my big pocket full of uh, what would what you know. We'd have like ten and fifty pence pieces instead of quarters. <laughs> but like playing like oh um, like like now I, actually I can remember a couple of favorite ones. The first time I ever saw the four player gauntlet cabinet. And yes. I realized oh, four yes. people could all play yes. at once. Elf, you know, Warrior, Valkyrie. Uh, like, oh, it was so cool. And then, and the other one was Rampage. Three yeah. players smashing up the city. King oh, King my King God. King so King much King fun. Can never, can never be replicated. But there was a certain kind of, maybe it's because you know, we, were, we were of a certain age, like we were kids. But walking into a video arcade and hearing all the machines and that smell and just the, 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 the lights and even the carpet and everything was just like, you were just that that was your happy place right that was it magic was. going to arcades yeah absolutely Preach, you guys always making it. me smile we get to get a little piece of some lc background and some knowledge right there i had more questions but we had too much fun <laughs> and we got to get into the show Sorry. but before we get into the show you know i always like to bring a smile bring a little bit of energy and some fun into the podcast and this week my good friend gary would have slid something into the slack channel about a weird simulator game and so i have a fun question for you guys because we've seen these weird simulator games from goat simulator house flipper surgeon simulator street cleaner simulator farming simulator european bus simulator lawn mowing simulators coming soon i know aaron greenberg's excited about that one but this latest one gary put in was power washing simulator and so i had the I'm question to you. myself right now <laughs> i wanted to know you guys out there what is that weird simulator game that would bring you a lot of joy? And I'll go first just to get the ball rolling to give you a little bit of a time to settle in. I would actually want to do laundry simulator. One of my favorite things on planet earth to do is to do laundry. I really enjoy laundry and the act of it. And so when I look at all these crazy simulators, I think, you know what? A laundry simulator might just get me in there. I might jump into it. So Gary, you're the one who started this. I'm going to kick it to you because you've played some weird simulator games from, you know, mud truck driver to fishing boy. What is the simulator game you want the most? I love, I mean, I, I have a soft spot for those kind of wacky simulator games. And like, I actually spent a lot of time with House Flipper. I really enjoyed it. Um, and, the, and the pressure washing. I used to watch pressure washing videos on YouTube. I find it like strangely, <laughs> really yes. satisfying in an ASMR kind of way. And so, you ever watch sandblasting videos? Oh my God, it's incredible. Go, watch, go, go after this. Do yourself a favor. Go like type sandblasting into YouTube and just watch people sandblast shit. It's amazing. <laughs> so the fact that they're, they're, okay, now, now you can bring the experience home, right? It's the arcades all over again. I love it. Um, there's one right now that I re I installed recently called Doomsday Prepper, where you have to. It's basically a simulation of building your own like Doomsday bunker because you know you're a, one of these prepper type people. You, I think you might actually have stumbled onto something though, Mike. I love I love like you know I love well, like what about like Laundromat Tycoon? Do the laundry, but also like build a business. I think that that there's a viable a viable game proposal right there. I would do that. Yeah, you, you're speaking my language, Gary, because I'm into that. Elsie, I'm going to go to you. What weird simulator game would get you excited and happy? I think they already did it. I, I, I don't know why, as a kid, I was always infatuated with with the bus system and the transit <laughs> oh, system. You're gonna oh, okay, go oh, ahead. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I was yeah. always infatuated as a kid with that yes. stuff. It, it's just like, all right, I'm the driver. I'll drop you off here and all that stuff. And the same thing with trains and things like that. The transit system stuff is always something that appealed to me for some weird reason. So yeah, I I, I gotta try. I, I do. I do hear they have the uh, the bus one. So I, I don't know about the train one, but I definitely know I saw the bus. There's, one. there's something calming about. About these games right because there's no hostility there's no it's not violent you can just like get on with it you know the same people like farming games and stardew valley and stuff like that just just go do your job like some people find that like a really it's just a nice way to kind of disengage and like have a chill gaming session drive a bus why not drive a truck exactly exactly <laughs> Paris, you got excited about transit over there. Why don't you tell me what kind of simulator game you're well, looking for? Well, yeah, so so I'll cheat and I'll do two now because absolutely, uh, Lord Cognito hit it. I would love a city bus 
simulator I, I don't know why but i just think that would be cool to manage an entire city and have all the buses on time and people have to get the transfers and doing all that stuff I, i'm just weird that way that i would love to manage something like no, that. no wait do you do you do you want to manage the bus system and like plot out the transit routes yep. and the fares and stuff or do you actually want to be behind the wheel of the no, bus no, no, i want to manage it i want to manage okay. it so then it's automated so i'm making sure things get to where they need and you'd have hazards in the way so you have to reroute and still get people on time oh i would love that I think that would be great to, to do that. Um, the other one would be kind of like you talked already, Mike, would be the lawnmower one, a lawnmower simulator where you're literally going to different big giant backyards and then you're cutting the patterns into the yard and doing all this weird landscaping stuff. I think that would be fun as well. So it's worth mentioning because Mike mentioned House Flipper earlier. There is garden DLC for House Flipper where you can do exactly you that. You can get yeah. mow the big lawn. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, everybody out there on YouTube, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what weird simulation game you would love to play or you would have some enjoyable moments with. But let's jump into the show. Of course, this is the kind of funny X cast we post each and every Saturday at 6 a.m. West Coast, best coast time on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games on roosterteeth.com and on podcast services around the the globe. Please make sure to leave a review. No matter where you're listening on different podcast services, let us know that you hear us and you're enjoying the show. And if you're watching over on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Give us a like, leave a comment, and check out all the incredible content that Kind of Funny brings, whether it be on Kind of Funny Prime, on Kind of Funny Games, or over on Kind of Funny Plays, where you can catch all of our live streams on VOD, just in case you miss them in the middle of the day. We'd like to thank our Patreon producers, Mick at The Nanobiologist, Tom Bach, Elliot, James Hastings, Sancho West Gaming, Julian the Gluten-Free Gamer, Trent Berry, and Tyler Ross. This week, the Kind of Funny X-Cast is brought to you by ExpressVPN and Canva, but we'll get into those later. Let's jump right into the show. Guys, a fun week of Xbox news, a lot of gaming stuff to talk about, but the big one is here. The workaround is finally come to iOS and Windows 10. That's right, the xCloud beta is now available to a limited number. It's gonna be on invites only with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers. But I know that a couple of us here have been able to jump in and try a little bit of that. But the big highlights right now, of course, Windows 10 PC, Apple phones and tablets via the web browser. So now Gary and Paris, We've talked about this, right? We had the big holdup, the big snafu with Apple and trying to get that Game Pass app on there to start cloud streaming. Phil and the team said, hey, we're going to figure out a workaround. And we said, well, when is that going to be? Well, guess what? It looks like the future is now. Sure. Paris, I'm going to jump to you first because I know I think everybody's almost got to try that. But Paris, this is a beta. What are your experiences so far? What do you think of the look? How's it going over there on Windows 10 and Apple? Uh, so far, it's been great. Um, so first, I want to thank Xbox for extending the invite and, and getting me in the beta to be able to try it. So I've used it on my Windows 10 desktop. I've used it on my Surface Pro as well, as well as on my iPad. Um, obviously, we're, we've already had it on Android for the mobile device. So I didn't really need to test that as far as being on the iPhone. I was really curious to do it on the iPad specifically because that would probably be the primary way um, I'm, I'm gonna take advantage of this. But I would say even on the browser, um, I, I've used it on Chrome and I've used it on Edge on Windows 10 has been really good. Um, I love the dashboard layout. So you literally just go to xbox.com forward slash play, put in your gamer tag credentials and boom, you're there. You're, you're seeing your entire all the cloud gaming uh, Game Pass games are there and it'll show you recently played and all of that. And uh, you know, I immediately jumped into Banjo-Kazooie and you know, I had to put a video <laughs> out there, you know, expressing that, hey, we need a sequel to Banjo-Kazooie, but it was fun, um, control pretty well. Use my uh, Xbox controller uh, via Bluetooth and I used the, uh, the, uh, the, the Windows dongle as well when I was on the desktop PC. And yeah, controls were fine, um, very minimal lag, which was good. Um, I've only tested it inside my house on Wi-Fi. I have not ventured out and used it on a cell network yet, so I can't comment on that. But played Banjo-Kazooie, actually wound up playing it for a couple hours, and um, it was great. Played Wolfenstein on there. Um, I checked out Gears 5 as well, and uh, I took a peek at Halo 5, but I didn't really play that much. But all my experiences were, were really good on it so far, so they, they've done a great job translating that over i would say comparing it to what i've already done on android to now doing on ios and windows 10 i couldn't tell the difference and ironically enough 
I kind I kind of like the browser. You know, when when I did it on my Surface wow. Pro, I, okay. I I just think because it's not immediately full screen, so I can actually be playing in a browser screen, have other things happening on the PC at the same time. Mm -hmm. But if I want to make it go full screen, I can and play it that way as well. And um, yeah, it's 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 been a pretty solid experience so far. So so kudos to the team that put that together. That's really great to hear. LC, have you been able to jump into this beta so far and have you been able to try it out? Yes, very fortunate to get the invite. So salute to Xbox on that. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, I went straight in. You know, I, I do, I'm doing it with Windows 10 uh, browser. Like Paris said, I saw my collection of games pretty much there from xCloud. Immediately dove right into Destiny and Outriders. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. What was going on? And uh, yeah, it was it was very impressive. You know, again, full screening it out, getting past the browser uh, tab on Chrome. And I was very impressed with the latency, very minimal. I went to what a hard wire connection with my Xbox Elite controller. And I just wanted to eliminate as much lag as possible. And it was really responsive. The only nitpick I would say was just that, um, obviously, it, in my opinion, it's using uh, the Xbox One S uh, server blades, I believe. So mm -hmm. it was a 720p resolution. And so that you got to get used to when, you know, I'm a little bougie. I've been on a, the Series X. So I, I do notice it now, you know, you kind of take. So, but at the end of the day, like, this is going to be transformative to get it in browser because I feel the only disadvantage that xCloud had versus Stadia was this feature. Stadia, had, you weren't confined to the screen. You you have that browser potential. And like Pirate said, you know, there's a huge subset of people on iOS devices that just weren't able to experience this at all as well. So it's transformative. I really enjoyed my experience so far. And I think I can't wait, man. The sky's the limit for that, this to get out more screens and expand maybe even more into TVs and stuff like that, whether it be through an app and stuff like that. But I think the foundation is great, and I can't wait for them to continue to improve and eventually get the Series X can, server. Can, can I add one thing to what you just said? Because because you made a great point about this still being on the, the 1S server blades. Bruh, I, I have gotten so bougie with those load times because I'm like, man, why does stuff take us so long to load in? It's because it's on the 1S stuff, so... So I hey so kudos to the Series X and the PlayStation Five and all that stuff with these fast SSDs in it because I'm definitely not used to the old way anymore. I felt like why why is this taking so long? I just want to play, you know. So yeah, it, it was a good experience overall though. Yeah, absolutely. Bro. The Airbnb makes a tremendous difference. And one thing that I recommend for those who are using it remotely via 4G, 5G, or what have you on Android. What I was ended up doing was actually using, I used a Project Cloud at first, but then I would use console streaming to actually go into my Series X so I could have the advantages of the 60 frames per second and the NVMe because, I, 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 like you said, it's so noticeable when you're on the Series X so long, but great point. Yeah. That's really nice that you brought up remote play, right? We've had a couple people write in. It's like, hey, we always talk about xCloud, but let's not forget what the remote play functionality allows us to do, right? Going right into your Series X or Series S or Xbox One console and being able to play remotely is really, really cool. So right now, over 100 Xbox Game Pass titles through Edge, Google Chrome, and Safari, sending out invites, going nice and slow with the beta, planning to open it up a couple of months from now. Gary, you've been a big person on this one where you want to see it over here on the iOS side of things. Are you excited about this? Have you gotten your hands on this? And how much longer do we need to wait until this is out of beta and you know, kind of a full release, but still technically a beta, but not a beta, but everybody's using it. So I'm told uh, by uh, reliable sources that my uh, invite is uh, in the mail and I'll be getting it soon. <laughs> I'll look, look forward to uh, to checking out maybe as early as this weekend. I don't know yet, but definitely um, it's 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 on its way. So I'm looking forward to checking it out uh, in particular, because as you said, Mike, like I, we're a big Apple household around here. Like we're just one of those households that like it just all ended up being Apple stuff. Like, you know, I've got my gaming PC my streaming pc right here but like that where i work back there that's a, that's an imac um iphone uh apple tvs all over the house i my kids on an ipad my wife and, uh, and my and my kid and my myself all have apple laptops upstairs it's very apple and it's not like we're kind of like fanboy you know, apple watch my goodness when, I, when, when it really does start to add up um that Bill Gates microchip needs to start kicking in pretty soon, I think, because like Apple's got me like all the way, all the way uh, down the river here. Um, it's just you know we I, I just always been a Mac person. I've always been, and it's ended up like just all the stuff just works together fairly seamlessly, and so it's great until something like this comes along, where you know generally when when companies are trying to support 
the mass market, they generally tend to worry about Android first because it's the biggest operating system in the world uh, globally. And that's the box they have to check first. So we all understand that. But they did have to check this box. Paris, you and I talked about this earlier this week, mm -hmm. right, on KFGD. Yeah, we did. They have, they have to check this box, especially in the U.S. I don't know the exact numbers, but it came up recently in something I was watching. Something like 9 out of 10 young people, I don't know exactly how that might be defined, like maybe it's like, you know, 14 to 25 or like, you know, but basically that demographic that so many people want to be hitting, like young, like young video gamers, 9 out of 10 people in the U.S. Uh, are on iOS, not Android. And so if you want to hit that market, you gotta you gotta check that box. They 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 couldn't just say, well, we're just gonna not worry about Apple. Like they had to they couldn't leave that money on the table. So the workaround for the time being seems like it's working really well. Um, I definitely feel like this household will get a lot of use out of it. So my kids always walking around with her iPad. When I go tell her, hey, guess what? You can play all your Xbox games on that now as well with a controller, that's gonna blow her tiny mind. She's gonna love that. Um and so it's all, it, look, we're, we're, we're seeing, what, what is it? Grand Overlord, the, the Maximus, Decimus, Meridius, Phil Spencer, whatever he's called. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Dominus Maximus, Aurelius Spencer. Dominus Maximus, Phil Spencer. Like, they, like we, we, we see all that. We, we, we see it all coming together, right? The frictionless experience, more games in more places, removing barriers to playing games. You don't even need the hardware anymore. There are, the smart apps are coming. The, some kind of dongle, I think, is probably coming. Um, you know, there's a uh, yeah. The Series S is is already there as the as the entry level console. Um, the the game streaming is already working on on Android, and now it's going to be working on i on on Windows and uh and i iOS and hopefully Mac as well. Like again, there's there's going to be a point where there's like no nobody's going to say I would love to play Xbox games, but there's no way for me to. They say, well, here's like a million different exactly. ways that you can get in. Yeah. You know, for, for, at almost no barrier to entry at all so you know that that is the phil spencer galaxy brain uh master plan and so far it seems to be rolling out pretty well yeah i would i would agree with that gary i do think the rollout's been pretty well i think the thing like obviously cloud gaming is a thing and, and xbox isn't the only one that's doing it sony obviously has it nvidia's doing it google's doing it as well same same with amazon but I think what excites me about this tech tech is how they've implemented it and how they're going to continue to implement it because they're going to bring it to the console level in the sense that we're going to start to see this instant access with games. So I don't know, Starfield comes out, but you forgot to preload it. That still doesn't mean you can't play it right away with your friends. You can still instantly start playing it via cloud streaming while the game itself downloads in the background or kind of the scenario that we're seeing now that it's in the browser and on Windows 10 and iOS and as the world opens up you know I'm on my Surface Pro at Phil Spencer literally did this when he was going to the to the Bethesda yeah. thing where he was on a Surface Pro playing Destiny 2 in the airport but let's say a new game comes out you're traveling you get to access that game on the go and then still to go tell your console, hey, go download that. So I can kind of quote unquote preview it while I'm out of the house. And then when I get back home, it's there ready for me, start playing natively as, as I normally would. Um, the best thing about cloud gaming and the best thing about the way that Xbox has done it in that it's tied into Game Pass Ultimate is it's a supplement. They are not forcing you to do it. It is just a nice supplementary way that you can start playing your games on multiple platforms, but the primary way we still play exists. It's a choice. I, I think to me, that seems to be the biggest tagline for this generation, choice. Exactly. You don't, you don't have to do it, go do mm -hmm. it if you want. If you don't, do it the way that you always did it. And I, and I, think, I think overall, that's a great thing. Yeah. I just, I just want to add one little reality check to this because we all love this, right? And the future yeah. is, is on its way. And we, we can see where the future is going to be. And we're at the thin end of that wedge right now, and it's exciting. But this whole idea, this utopian ideal of playing games, you know, you, you, your Xbox library goes with you everywhere you go through the magic of cloud streaming. Let's not forget, we already all know this. That's still totally at the mercy of whatever the internet architecture is where you live. When I, when I go stay in a hotel, I can barely get my email over the, the, the Wi-Fi. I, am I, am I, do I really expect to be playing Series X games flawlessly over like a hotel connection or an airport or wherever I am when I'm, the places I can imagine I might be when I'm traveling on the go? That That's going to, right now, I think we're in a situation where whether it be Stadia, Luna, xCloud, you name it, these game streaming services are a little bit ahead of their time in terms of we need, 
we need 5G and 6G and, and broadband fiber and everything to roll out everywhere and be fully accessible to everyone um, be before that dream can be real. It's a great idea in principle, but you're always going to be immersed at the architecture. And right now, the infinite infra internet infrastructure is lagging behind where it needs to be for, th for this kind of stuff to realize its full potential. Maybe in a few years. Yeah, it, it's a great point. I mean, at the end of the day, you're absolutely right. I mean, the infrastructure has to be in place. I think I lean towards what Paris is saying in reference to the option, because for some for some people, this is going to be so some people, this is not going to be an option. And for some people, it's going to be a really viable option. And I just think about regions where the Xbox console is really not something that would ever really penetrate the market. And, you know, you have some regions, whether it be Japan or what have you, where mobile is, is really dominant. So, you know, the, the key for them is to continue to make those kind of deals. Like I think they did with uh, Korea, if correct me if I'm wrong, with the SK Telecom deal, like work with the IS ISPs work with these different providers to try to really get the infrastructure up so that the service is actually viable because you are making a fantastic point. It has to be viable. The other thing I want to add that I love about this whole utopian future with it is just that, you know, I love the idea of, OK, I'm traveling, you know, I'm away from my Series X or what have you, but. I'm in a hotel and provided I got before G going or a good wireless spot. And I, I played out of worlds that way. You know, I, I literally started a game and the, the beauty of it was the synergy of my save data from my console. The minute I booted up, boom, right there. And I think for some, that's going to be a, an appealing prospect. So is it perfect? No, absolutely, Gary. The, the infrastructure has to get right. Yeah, I completely agree with you. But I think for some people, they can use this as an option. And that's what it is. It's just it's just an option. I think the mistake Stadia made was saying, this is the future. This is the, yeah. the replacement of the console. And when you come with that language and you're, you're very, you're going to turn off a lot of consumers and you see what's going on. Yeah. It it depends on what the use cases end end up being, right? And Microsoft and Stadia and all like Stadia is still around, but you know all these companies are still going to be are going to be studying this at home. You know, there's there's one use case which is you know like you can go play um, Outriders or whatever on your iPad now around around the house. Now I'm still on my home Wi-Fi network at home, which is very good. So I imagine that working very well. I'm just worrying about when you see these commercials, they always show people like out traveling on the go like, at, a, at, a, at a park bench or whatever playing. I'm like, where, where's the internet coming from in this in this fictional Star Trek public park that you apparently live in? Like, where, where, where's the internet coming from? I don't know. Um, again, we are getting there. I mean, you could, I could even, I've got like unlimited 5G on my phone. If I could find like good 5G signal, I could hotspot that to an iPad or, or, or a lap or a surface pro or whatever and play. And, and, you know, we can, we can all live in those TV commercials and that would be, and that would be wonderful. But yeah, we've got, we've got some right, right now. It's a good place to be right. Mike, what Microsoft is imagining is a little bit ahead of what's possible, which is where you always want to be ahead of that curve. But yeah, the, the infrastructure needs to catch up for us to get to the point where we're all kind of, you know, fully live in that dream of like anywhere I go, my, or my entire library goes with me. And the funny thing is, in the meantime, as you just touched on it a moment ago, is like even some of the basic stuff still impresses me, like stuff that's so new, like the novelty of hasn't worn off. Like if, let's say I'm playing a game upstairs on my, I have a Series X upstairs and one downstairs. Um, if I play upstairs and like for whatever my kid wants the big TV, I'll go downstairs pick up the, and it will capture the save out of the cloud and I'm right back where I was on a different console. Yep. Now that it, it's, when you think about it, that's pretty basic and yet it still feels like magic to us, right? That you can do that. I love that. Absolutely. Love the option. Gary, I unfortunately will have to tell you that I have also been uh, invited to partake in the beta late last night. So thank you to team. Xbox I get it. Everyone, and, everyone, everyone know, but Gary, I get it. I get uh, it. It's becoming I, a trend around here. I, I was get trying it. to hold it close to the chest there, but <laughs> I was able to jump in for just a little bit late last night. And for the big one, like Paris touched on, I was looking for the uniformity and being so similar to the app that we've been so accustomed to on the Android side, right? I was looking for that background, looking for the tiles, looking for the layout. And when I jumped onto the windows 10 side of things, it looked just like that, right? You're on the browser and everything looks just like I've already been playing over on the Android side. And I was so happy to be able to click on some of my old saves. Like you said, LC, right? Click on oblivion. The game pops up. Guess what? There's my save. We're off and running. And it was really, really cool. And I think what excites me is that windowed mode, like you brought up Paris, right? Of like having this now on your PC and it's in a window, but I'm still keeping my eye out on social media, got the emails popping up, but Gary doesn't know that I'm not responding to work emails, right? There he doesn't go. know <laughs> that I'm playing games over there. So it is really cool to see that. And it will be exciting to see the rollout of this and to finally hit that phase of like iOS and that Apple side of things are finally included, right? Because we had just that little taste before we had a little hiccup in the road. 
and the team has worked hard to make that work around. So it's really, really cool to see that and uh, move forward with this one. I'm really, really excited. Paris, besides Banjo, did you play any other games? Yeah, yeah, I played. I played Wolfenstein. Um, I played. Um, now I'm now I'm blanking because I, I said it a second ago. But I played Wolfenstein. I actually I did check out Destiny Two. I think for a little bit. Um, I know when I, I I did boot up MLB the Show, but I didn't play it, and that's where I noticed the super long load times compared to doing it on the console. Um, like I said, I, I played Banjo as well. So I mean, overall. I mean, like I said, every, all the experiences were, were pretty good. Um, no, no complaints. Um, the fact that, like, like I said before, you can have it in the browser. You can kind of put it in a windowed mode. You don't have to instantly go into full screen. It kind of allows you to still multitask at the same time. So, yeah, I, again, I, I think they did, did a great job with this uh, overall. So I, so, I actually so have one question as, as, as someone who hasn't tried it. I have a question. Do you feel like, cause we talked about how this is a workaround, right? There's no dedicated app. It goes through like there's on Android. It goes through a browser. Do mm -hmm. you feel like you're missing out on anything by not having a dedicated app? Or is it like, once you open the browser, you may as well be in an app. Like, do you feel like it, it, it's a workaround for now? Is it going to be good enough that it's always just a workaround or does Microsoft need to find a way to come up with like, no, an I, app I think it's fine now. I think it's fine now because, okay, so the way it works on iOS, I guess we didn't explain this. So you'll open up your Safari browser, go to xbox.com forward slash play. Once you put in your credentials, it's going to prompt you to then add, add basically add an app to the home screen. You'll, whatever that button is you do on the top right corner of Safari, and it literally adds a Xbox Game Pass Oh, uh, right, but, it, but, it, but it's there. basically a link to a web browser window, exactly. right? But it looks like an app on your phone, right? Got exactly. it. Exactly. And it's fine. It boots right up and works. So I don't think, I think we're at a point now where they, just like NVIDIA, because they're doing the same thing, I, I don't see the need to go try and get it into the App Store at this point. I think this workaround is sufficient enough unless Apple does something nefarious on the back end, you know, to slow it down and, and, and it doesn't work properly. But the way it's working right now, I mean, I think it's fine. All right, really exciting stuff. The beta rolling out, invites are coming out. They'll slowly but slowly add more people into it so you can try over 100 games going through xbox.com forward slash play, available on Edge, Google Chrome, and Safari. So some options there for you to try that out. But let's take a quick pause and take a word from our sponsors for the week. This week, the Kind of Funny Xcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN and Canva. First up, we'd like to thank ExpressVPN. A few decades ago, private citizens used to be largely that, private. What's changed? The internet. Think about everything you've browsed, searched for, watched, or tweeted. Now imagine all of that data being crawled through, collected, and aggregated by third parties into a permanent public record, your record. Having your private life exposed for others to see was once something only celebrities worried about. But in a new era where everyone is online, everyone is a public figure. To keep my data private when I go online, I turn to ExpressVPN. Did you know there are hundreds of data brokers out there whose sole business is to buy and sell your data? The worst part is they don't have to tell you who they're selling it to or get your consent. One of these data points is your IP address. Data harvesters use IP to uniquely identify you and your location. But with ExpressVPN, my co connection gets rerouted through an encrypted server and my IP address is masked. Every time I turn ExpressVPN on, I've given a random IP address shared by other ExpressVPN customers. That makes it more difficult for third parties to identify me and harvest my data. And best part is how easy ExpressVPN is to use. No matter what device you're on, phone, laptop, or smart TV, all you have to do is tap one button to get protected. So if like me, you believe that your data is your business, secure yourself with the number one rated VPN on the market. Visit expressvpn.com slash kind of funny and get three extra months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash kind of funny. Go to expressvpn.com slash kind of funny to learn more. Up next, we'd like to thank our final sponsor of the week, Canva, for their support. Canva Pro is the easy-to-use design platform that has everything you need to design like a pro. Whether you're a professional designer or just getting started, Canva Pro can help boost you and your team's productivity and creativity. It's a quick, easy, and affordable way to design whatever you need. No matter what you're creating and sharing, 
Canva Pro has everything you need in one place, including a collection of over 75 million premium photos, videos, audio, and graphics. Plus, Canva Pro comes with time-saving tools that simplify and speed up the creative process. You get all this and more in just one Canva Pro subscription. There's no idea too big or too small for Canva Pro. It's super dope and easy to use. Makes all design stuff fun where you just pick styles you like and it does all the work. Super helpful for creators both up and coming and established. Design like a pro with Canva Pro. Right now you can get a free 45 day extended trial when you use our promo code. Just go to canva.me slash kfgames to get your free 45 day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash K-F games. Canva dot M-E slash K-F games. All right, everybody, welcome back, guys. You know, not really Xbox news, but gaming news and something that's near and dear to my heart. We got some Battlefield talk, y'all, and I'm pretty excited about it. Two pieces of crazy Battlefield talk that we got to talk about. So I'm going to take it right from the EA blog so we can hear it directly from them. And we'll talk about it. All right. So. Hey, Battlefield community. I know everyone is wanting more details about what's to come for Battlefield this year, and I promise we have a lot to show you in the coming months. We're putting some things together for when we reveal the next generation of Battlefield, and we can't wait to show you that to all of you. But for now, we have a couple of things we wanted to tell you about. First, we're really excited to have the biggest Battlefield development team ever working on our console and PC game for this holiday season. And second... We have something very exciting to talk about on mobile. We're in daily play testing mode right now, polishing and balancing and making the best possible battlefield we can. But I will tell you, we're taking a bold step. It, it has everything we've loved about battlefield and it takes it all of it to the next level. Epic scale, all out military warfare, crazy unexpected moments, game changing destruction, massive battles packed with more players and mayhem than ever before, all brought to life with the power of next-gen consoles and PC. It's also been our vision to bring Battlefield to more platforms, so after the years of prototyping, I'm super happy to be able to let you know that our friends at Indus Indus Industrial Toys, working closely with all of us here at DICE, are developing a completely new Battlefield game, bringing All Out Warfare to smartphones and tablets in 2022. Guys, the question has always been, where's Battlefield at? When will it become the next big thing after a couple of years of good games, not Call of Duty takeover games. Now we're coming in with a second punch over to Activision and Call of Duty with a mobile version. As many of you guys know, Call of Duty Mobile is hot. Call of Duty Mobile is a pretty big time game over on the mobile side. So I'll kick it over to my dude, Paris, because you and I, we love Battlefield. Let's share the excitement first on the console side. The biggest, the baddest, big development team behind this console and PC effort. What needs to be done to make Battlefield the next best Battlefield game? I think at this point, they need to just get back to what makes Battlefield Battlefield. And yes, you're going to have a large map. There's, they're probably going to get it up to 128 players or something crazy like that. But get back to the fun part of the vehic vehicular, excuse me, the vehicular combat. That to me has always been the sweet sauce of battlefield stop trying to be call of duty if anything you see what call of duty is doing with war zone war zone they're implementing things that battlefield was doing all the way back in battlefield three and four with some of their some of those vehicles as well so get get back to that stuff the gunplay in battlefield has always been solid so i don't really think they need to change anything there at this point you know they're still going to do a campaign they're still going to do a story eh, okay whatever but focus on the multiplayer and get make make it fun make it so that, yes, there's going to be some squad based stuff because there's just going to be so many people on the map. But let's make this a true pun, not intended war zone. That is Battlefield. It sounds like I guess they're going to go back to the modern era this time. That's what what the rumors are saying. So I'm excited for it. I want to see what it is. Clearly, EA is really investing in this one. I think they've definitely take some lessons learned from the way they were trying to do war stories uh, with Battlefield five. And maybe they'll, you know, again, learn from that. 
and take the good things. There were some good things with what they were attempting to do. Take the good things out of that. But but the other things that the community were not happy about, because it seemed like they kind of gated a few things along the way because they were trying to, you know, keep people invested with content down the road. Let's not do that. Let's come out of the gate swinging. Let's have this big open map, bunch of players on there. Keep the good weapons that you're you're doing. Get the vehicles more involved. And let's just have let's have, like what was it? Battlefield Four. There there was level later. Levolution, right. my favorite word. I, I don't need that. I don't need that. Just no, 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 no. Stop right there, Paris. Stop. Stop. <laughs> stop. Little, stop. Little, little, little. Thank you, LC. No. <laughs> Levolution is the tagline. Levolution <laughs> is what draws you in to that Shanghai map when the tower crashes down. <laughs> and you, me, and Gary, we're running out the windows. We parachute out. The tower crashes down. That has to be in Paris. That, you're that wild. Was, that is fun the first two times you do it. And after that, <laughs> okay, maybe, really? maybe you're right, Paris. Okay, maybe <laughs> it wears off after a while, but it's just the gimmick. And I love the gimmick. Yeah. You're so funny. Yeah. I want to kick it over to you, LC, because you're smiling, laughing, bringing the energy. And you gave me, you gave me the prayer hands. And yeah. that means you heard it. Yeah. Going back to modern times, right? Bringing the modern warfare. We've gone back in time a couple of, couple of games now. And we now know that Call of Duty is going to go back in time. Where do you fall on this? Does this Battlefield game need to be in a modern setting? I would love it to be because, uh, like Paris said, like I, I was a huge fan of like three and then four was just it was it was transformative. Me, I know it had its issues at launch. God, we know about those issues, but you know when it was working and just like that sixty four player, I, it was a huge jump at the time for next mm -hmm. generation consoles from a player count standpoint. And I just remember the pure fun. And again, like Paris said, just what makes Battlefield so special is that vehicular combat, jumping into a tank for people or someone jumps into a plane, helicopter. It, it truly gives you that feeling of all out war. And that's something that they that's their lane and they need to stick in that because to me, that's what Call of Duty doesn't really replicate as much. So I feel they have that unique advantage there to stick to their roots. I'm very excited about this. They seem extremely excited about this mode or whatever. I'm very curious if they will even attempt uh, a battle royal portion. That'll be interesting to me to see. I think they will. Yeah, because I do. You, you figure, you know, the base is there and obviously people, you know, still crave, you know, run to that mode since the days of PUBG. So, you know, it, I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I think this is, um, you know, we kind of need a little refreshing th take from Battlefield. Again, as long as they stick to their roots, the gunplay is good, the setting is good, hopefully it's modern. We want that. And yeah, I would buy some cheesy Levolution gimmicky kind of time. <laughs> I know Paris hates it, but I missed it. It, it was it was it was one of those marketing speak things, but it was so cool when you actually experienced Mike. Remember when that building crumbled? Never forget it. Never you forget know, it. It was a moment. It was like one of those. Oh, this is next gen. We made it, y'all. We and, made it. And you know what's <laughs> perfect for bringing Levolution back? Bad Company <laughs> Three. Let's do it. Oh, no. Okay, and I won't okay. argue that. Okay. I won't argue that. I, I would yeah. love to see that happen. But and look, and to be fair. The Frostbite engine, destructible environments, dice, they're masters at that. So I want destructible environments and kind of going to what you were saying a second ago. I mean, the only reason I think the only reason Firestorm didn't work, which is their battle royale mode yep. for Battlefield, is it wasn't day and date. It yeah. came so late okay. after everyone was already moving away from Battlefield 5 at that point. Right. I think if they launch six, whatever it's going to be called, and they have the, the BR, the battle royale mode there day one, and have it completely integrated into everything they're doing, which I think kind of would play into whatever this mobile thing is going to be as well. I think more people are going to be receptive to it. Because look, again, Call of Duty Warzone, they're doing it right. So yeah. you know DICE and EA is looking at this and they go, they have to capitalize on it. But at the same time, I want my classic Battlefield. I I, 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 we got to have that. So so hopefully they'll they'll have all that ready to go at launch. Yeah, you and I have spent some time in the Warzone. We've spent some time out there in the different battle royales battlefield when it says battle royale to use that speak to you with this massive combat that we've all known battlefield for you no, muted gary wrong mute. my bad i was eating something earlier when you have to deal with my <laughs> masticating live on on stream um yeah, I, 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 was, I was listening to what you said earlier about, like, well, they won't be on Battle Royale. Like, I, I, at this point, I feel like that ship has sailed. Like, you have to check. You can't, I don't think you can be viable in the first person shooter space and not have a Battle Royale option. You know, we've seen how big Warzone 
uh, has begun. Uh, and I actually, it's funny, I, I should reinstall that and get back in there because I really enjoyed uh, the times that I've spent playing with you, Mike, and some of my other friends in the war zone. And I, I'm not a big shooter guy. I, I don't, you know, I, I usually play the single player account, like the, the new Black Ops uh, Cold War campaign. I really, you, you can bash it out in six hours and move on to the next thing that's really fun. And then I don't usually stick around for the multiplayer stuff because I, listen, I, 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 I got the shit kicked out of me by 14 year olds in high school once, or I don't need to do that all over again. So I'm too old for all of that right now. I've moved, I've moved on. Uh, I'm just I'm the, the last shooter I was any good at was Quake Two. I mean, I'm just you know I I'm not I'm not good at these games anymore, and I lose lose far more. My 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 kill death ratio is not anything I would ever share publicly. It's frankly embarrassing. But I do remember Battlefield all the way back in the day, the very first one. I think it was Battlefield 1942. Oh. I remember that was the big thing that they brought to the city. Like, what what are you going to do to shake things up? Like, what, how is your shooter going to be different from everyone else's? And EA's answer was vehicles, right? That was the big thing. And it was it, the, the thing I liked, it was chaotic. It was so ridiculous. It was so unlike anything approaching real warfare. It was people just running around, jump in a plane, fly it around, crash it, jump in a tank, drive it off a cliff, you know, go get another one. Like, it was just absolute chaos. But that was part of what the fun of it was. And they've always leaned into that vehicular aspect of something that they are, even as other shooters have adopted you know war zones got vehicles and helicopters and boats and stuff but like battlefield always felt like they were the first to kind of really stake that claim mm -hmm. like it's fun to drive around in a tank or to yeah. jump into a messerschmitt or whatever i'm curious to see what they do next in terms of the setting because that's always big for me i know you know they did world war one and world war two if they're going coming back into the modern era that might interest me again because i always like to at least play the single player stuff the war stories things like that are interesting to me and then in terms of the competitive arena I mean, I I don't bother with um with Call of Duty regular like deathmatch and capture the flag and stuff like that. But I'll always play battle royale. There's just something about battle royale that has like really invigorated the the. the I was going to say the shooter space, but like really video gaming as a whole. We were talking about this earlier this week. How amazing is it? I'm so surprised. I don't want to derail the conversation, but it's since we're talking about, it, I think it's worth bringing up just how robust and adaptable the battle royale concept ended up being. Like we we you know PUBG introduced it as like a shooter concept and uh, you know, um, uh, Daisy and games like that had, had brought it. But no, what was it? Was it Daisy? I can't remember. But the very you know, Armor Three. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was off Armor. Yeah, it was Daisy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. first ones to kind of with the King of the Hill and H One Z One and stuff like that. But now you can play Pac Man Battle Royale and Tetris yeah. Battle Royale and Mario mm -hmm. Battle Royale, and it ends up actually plugging really well into a bunch. Like Pac Man is like everything about Pac Man is like new and interesting and fun again because you're playing it against ninety eight other people all in real time, and it just it's just so much fun. So. I think we are. We live in a day and age now, especially you've got a shooter. You've got to you've got to make some kind of battle battle royale offering if you want the game to have a long tail and for people to keep playing it. You know, beyond just the first few weeks. I don't know. I'm interested to see what the interest see what they do. I I hope it's an interesting setting. I hope that it's, it has an interesting single player story focus for, for, for people like me who care about that kind of stuff. And I and I and I'll be very interested to see what they do with the battle royale because between PUBG. And you know Fortnite and Apex uh, and Warzone, it's a very very crowded space, and it's already become quite a mature subgenre. And it's like, how do you stand out? Like you know, that's a big question. Like how do we make our our, our battle royale stand out from it? How do we get people from Apex or Fortnite or Warzone to come over and try whatever the new Battlefield uh, battle royale is going to be? So it's going to be interesting interesting to see for sure. Oh, so Gary, I want to derail the derail <laughs> and I'm actually going to throw this to LC because I'm very curious being the guest what he thinks. Mm -hmm. I agree with you about, about Battle Royale and just how it's evolved over the years and shooters, especially you want to see that component in the multiplayer. Halo. Do they Ooh. need it? Oh, that's LC. a good Bro, you go, you're on it. Um, I think so. I think so. I, I, you know, at the end of the day, as a purist, it's going to be weird for me to see it. But at the end of the day, this is where the industry is going. And I think if, you know, with the free to play model, and then we'll get into about what, what's mm -hmm. happening in Xbox Live, you know, I, I think it's something that, like Gary said, you you can't miss the boat in this. This this has to be part of your package. So you know we know they've done what was it the um not was what was the name of the uh they had a specific mode. It was different. It was like a separate mode, but it was a uh, multiplayer PVE PVP component. But they had that battles, but they they really do need it. And I think it would be a nice addition to the series. I think they would get a demographic that probably wouldn't play Halo normally into the ecosystem. So 
why not? You know, me personally, I'm always going to go tried and true classic, you know, multiplayer that, that, that some of the best, you know, Halo 5 has some of the best multiplayer going. So I'm always going to lean that way, but I'm always going to be open to more groups getting into the Halo ecosystem, especially with a free to play model, which we are hoping that it, it's going to evolve into. With, with I, I'm curious about this because I'm probably the least Halo expert person on uh, here. And it seems to me, again, as kind of a relative layman that, well, why not? It's a first person shooter. Halo is a first person shooter. Battle Royale is a first person shooter, you know, uh, game mode. Why wouldn't it just map right on? But is there anything for people who know Halo better than me? Is there anything about the specific style of, of, of Halo, um, you know, multiplayer that would make it a particularly a good or a, a, a good fit for battle royale or a reason why it might be a trickier fit to kind of map it out to a battle royale play style. I, I, I think you're the expert. Yeah, on this, you, right? you know, I'm biting my tongue. <laughs> yeah. right, Paris. I, LC said it best, you know, I'm really happy that LC was on that side because I think we've had these takes early on in the year and people have gone absolutely wild. Either they agree with you or they get really mad at you. Right. And when you think of the halo purists, you think of that small, tight, team arena type feel right this is 4v4 your team versus my team you know the weapons you know the countdown and you better be there to beat me right and unfortunately whether you think it's good or bad and i'm on the side of it must have a battle royale at launch right and i'll tell that and i'll beat that drum all year long right because that is where the market share is going right that is where the kids are at that's what people want to be because the issue is gary is I was sick of your team always beating my team. You knew the countdowns. You knew where the weapons were. I'm not good enough to beat you. And yes, it's a fun time and it's a great time, but there's just this different variation of in the war zone, I might catch you slipping. I might go to a yeah. different area and find you where you're not ready, or I might be able to camp a certain tower that you weren't prepared for. It's just a different variation of the game. It's the new hotness. It's led to really great microtransactions, what we've talked about, right? with skins and cosmetics and weapons charms and all that in between. And so I think what we're seeing now is, yes, you have a great core multiplayer game, which Call of Duty does, right? But the new market share says, hey, we want something big. We want something different. We want something that's unique every single time we play. I'm not walking up the same ramp over on Lockout. I'm not in the middle of the Blood Gulch every single time. The Warzone map brings you something new and it's something different. And me and my friends have talked about it, right? What do you do? with halo right how do you make it unique you see in fortnite they have the different gun levels from gray to purple and gold right then you see in the war zone you have loadouts now where you actually get to choose your customizable call of duty guns and put it in the game then you think about halo well halo is a set 12 guns or 20 guns whatever you want to call it of iconic weapons that you know and love but the catch is if you rewind just like lc said it was Halo Warzone. That's the PvP versus PvE yeah. game that we've played for two different titles now. And if you don't remember, they had weapon cards. They had vehicle cards. And those were all different variations of the guns. So in all honesty, if the team worked hard enough to balance and figure out the right method, they could figure out how to make a different variation of the battle, ro battle rifle from a gray to a green version. And in between, maybe they do figure out a loadout. If you do remember, Halo 4 had loadouts you were able to choose your loadout before you started the game so yep. it is going to be really really exciting i think they must launch with it i know a lot of people will get mad in the comments but this is where the marketplace is going like lc said everybody wants it you have to have it and if you don't have it at launch like paris said it's a huge miss and right. we've had this conversation halo is iconic halo is the tent pole we love halo but truly and honestly look deep down inside yourself right now if you're watching and listening okay. Talk How many months have you really played Halo after launch? Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it six? Is it a full year? What games have really grabbed you and kept you, right? Look at the Warzone. One full year of just dominating the market space. Look at Fortnite. It changed the world. Look at Apex Legends. Getting season after season. It's one of the hottest things around. Right now, you look at Halo. Are you jumping back into Halo 5? Even though it has probably the best multiplayer suite it's ever had with the dash and the grapple and the movement mechanics. You're probably not very few people are. And so I think this is what it needs to be the next big bad thing and bring in a whole new audience. We always talk about it. Who's the new people coming in. You can't just keep us, the veterans in here. Got to bring new, I got to get Paris and his kids. I got to get the next kids, kids. I got to get everybody's kids in here or else we got a problem. So I will beat the drum for halo battle Royale. I think the team knows that it's going to be a fun balance of what they do with it. But I mean, the 
opportunities are endless. And it's so much fun to think about me and you guys in a warthog whipping around hundreds of squads around us, shooting left and right, plasma grenades coming out. We blow up and think about the settings, how iconic those settings yes. were, right? You think about Verdansk. And you're like, yeah, Verdansk, some giant Russian city. It's cool looking, whatever, right? You think of Fortnite and you're either into that setting in that cartoony world where you see Master Chief and Kratos collide or you're not. And then you think of Halo and you're like, man, think of all those settings that I love so dearly. Put it on there. So, yeah, I'll beat that drum. And, you know, I, I tried to bite my tongue the most I could, but I'm excited about no, the opportunity. No. It's my favorite. I, um, no. I've, I, I've, I've, I, over history, I'm sure I've been wrong far often, uh, more often than I'm, than I've been right, but I'm fairly confident about this one. It's not rocket science, but a Halo Battle Royale's coming. You're going to get a Halo Battle Royale. Well, yeah, that's, that's what I was, I was going to jump you're, in you're, and you're, say. You're, yeah. you're, I mean, it, again, it just, it just seems, it's like if they don't do it, you're going to be scratching your head, right? It just, it just makes so much sense. Here, but here's the additional prediction that I'll make. I think there's a good chance you won't get it at launch. Uh -huh. I think I think you might get it as That'd part of like the first big free update a couple of months down the road because look this is a big thing you know they pushed it once already now right. they're pushing it you know for kind of later in 20 uh, in, later in 2021 yeah. um it's a massive undertaking we've said before a million times ever since they first pushed it they have to get it right a battle royale mode think about like warzone where it's basically it's 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 its own separate thing like warzone kind of it, it almost exists separately from uh black ops and cold war and the, the, the rest of what we think of as call of duty it's like its own team it has its own challenges in terms of net code you know the technical challenges you have 60 100 people playing at once it's a whole other thing and so i think right it's entirely possible that they're triaging things at microsoft right now and thinking we can get this right but if we try to do it all now like maybe maybe let's just maybe the battle royale we we triage it a little bit and it will be part of like we will announce that we're doing it but like it's gonna I, I feel like there's a perfectly good chance that you might hear for example at e3 phil spence or whoever they bring out to say here's the battle royale and it's going to be coming in the first big update a couple of months after launch or something like that i don't that's just my feeling I, I think that would be a mistake. And and I purposely wanted to poke the bear that was Mike because I knew he had an epic rant stored on, on this one. <laughs> but cool. I, 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 I do agree that they need a battle royale. Um, I, they're not going to call it battle royale. It'll probably be called Warzone 2.0 or something like that to try and have a differentiator as to the, the other, you know, uh, battle royale games that are out there. But they need it for everything that Mike said to grab the next generation. Here, point blank. My son does not care about Halo and he's 15 years old. He does not care about it. I'm the old fogey that cares about it. You know what he cares about? He cares about Fortnite. Fortnite he can, yeah. Right? You're trying to capture that audience now. So you have to do something that's going to go get them. And it's everything that Mike just said. That's how you get them. And to your point, Gary, you very well could be right. But I think that would be a mistake if it's not ready to go day one because and I, I'm, I'm sure we're going to transition into this. The fact that they're going free to play now, they've already said Halo Infinite multiplayer is going to be free to play. Again, you're trying to grab my son. If that mode is not there in November, my son is going to go, yeah, I, I don't care. And then if you say, all yeah, right, no, you now, might, you might be right. Yeah. You know, like now, the, the, the launch of the yeah. game, that's the big window where you spend all your marketing money and, and you get everyone to like, take a look at your game. Exactly. So you want to, put your best foot forward and try to get them with that battle royale, whatever. I'm just saying it's entirely possible that Halo Infinite by itself is like obviously a massive, massive undertaking, mm -hmm. single player, the full suite of multiplayer modes, the battle royale mode, like a war, like a Call of Duty war, it is a whole other thing. And I'm right. just, I, again, I have no idea what's going on inside Microsoft right now, but they, it's entirely possible. I, I would love for, I would love for them to roll it all out. Right. in october november whatever it's going to be yeah i just got this feeling that it's such a it's like it's not just like tacking on another game mode battle royale is a whole other thing that you've got to worry about it's like a whole other development project so who knows maybe they've got it completely under control i just feel like it's possible that they that it's something that they will bring in down they'll announce it now but bring it in down the road i would hope this year delay that was a part of it so that because yeah. you know phil spencer had even mentioned at one point the discussion was talked about breaking halo up into yeah, parts I remember that. yeah i remember and then, yeah. He, and then he said no that's a bad idea and obviously they're gonna do it so i hope this year delay is mm -hmm. so we're getting everything synchronized to be ready to go day one i think 
whatever it is that they're going to show in June is going to be huge because this has to be the debut for the multiplayer, right? right? So I think the messaging behind that has to be crystal clear on here's the multiplayer, here are all the modes, here's if you're a Game Pass subscriber, the beta's out, blah, 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 time, here's the other flights and all, all this other stuff. I think they need to be locked and loaded, ready to go with that. Not to mention, oh, by the way, it's the 20 year anniversary in November. So that's kind of why I think it all has to launch at once. I don't think they could say, well, Battle Royale is coming in February or March. Because like I said, I think by that point, someone like my son who might be interested is not going to care. And he's just going to go right back to playing Fortnite. I mean, again. it is, it's a huge opportunity. The thing about Battle Royale, it's not just in terms of managing people's expectations. Like, oh, you know, we're, you know, we're savvy gamers. We play all these mm -hmm. games. We kind of know that if you're going to come to the marketplace with a big first person shooter and Halo is one of the biggest names in that space, you got to come correct, and that day, and and these days, that means you got to have the battle royale. Like, what? Why are you the only major franchise for, uh, out there that doesn't have it? It's just weird, right? It's a bad yeah. look. So I feel like they're going to do it. But again, another reason to your point, Paris, that they should do it at launches. This isn't just about pleasing existing Halo fans. Adding a battle royale is a way to potentially introduce Halo to a whole new yeah. audience of Fortnite kids and Apex kids and people that otherwise wouldn't have looked at it, but might now, but might now look at it just because they already know they can't, they like that style of game. But right. now here is in the Halo universe. They could this this could be a great opportunity to really bring. I mean, obviously Halo is is not struggling. Every it's it's massive, but it's not been around for a while. And if they're now they're bringing it back with a big splashy new release, it's mm -hmm. not just about pleasing the existing fans. It's about how can we grow the right. audience. And there we now know there's this massive massive audience. Uh, of Fortnite and Apex and Warzone, the people that like, who want specifically that style of gameplay. I won't even give you a second look if you don't have it. So this is an opportunity, I think, to if they get it right and they do bring Battle Royale out um, at launch to, again, just, just bring Halo to a far wider audience of people that might not otherwise have given it a second look. Yeah, I, I just want to jump in real quickly. Um, I think you guys are making fantastic points. And I think at the end of the day, it ultimately comes down to did the delay with the, obviously we know about the, semi lukewarm and negative reception initially of Halo Infinite, even though I personally didn't have a uh, problem with it because it looked like class girl to me, but you know, it wasn't received well. So with that delay combined with the pressure of now having to execute, will that affect a uh, proposed multiplayer battle royal mode if it's in store? That's the question, right? And I agree with, with, with everything you guys are saying. I think that, you know, if it's if it's there and it's ready at launch, then that demographic that, you know, most likely wouldn't play Halo multiplayer will be all the way locked in, like Paris' son, you know, like that, that that's a huge deal. So it, it's interesting, again, versus the resources and what they're focused on, and hopefully they're able with that one year delay to be able to combine everything and get this thing ready at launch. I want to make one final point on this as well. Why, why, why I think there's an opportunity for Halo, especially when you're talking like so you, when you're looking for those like 12 year old, 14 year old, you know, the Fortnite audience is like I wouldn't let my kid play Warzone or PUBG or something like that because yeah. it's very militaristic, it's very mm -hmm. gritty, it's very grand, it's very violent. My kid wouldn't even look. I know my kid wouldn't even look at it. But something like Fortnite, I, I guarantee there's households all around the country are like something like PUBG or Warzone is banned, but mm -hmm. Fortnite's okay because right. it's more cartoon. It's like a Nerf gun version of, of a military shooter, right? Or like Water Pistols. That's why I think Knockout City that we've talked about a bunch could be popular as well. Splatoon. Those kind of games are like for kids that want to play shooters, but their parents won't let them play like the, the, the grown-up shooters. Halo... I, I, I feel like I'm possibly wading into some dangerous waters here with all go. these Halo fans. But like Halo aesthetically is in a place kind of between the two, right? It's not super cartoony like Fortnite, but it's not super you know grounded and military realistic like Warzone. It's a little bit stylized. It's space aliens, you know the you know the guns, you know it's 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 pew pew ray guns rather than you know kind of more scary guns to some extent. I just I just wonder if there's an opportunity to, to maybe cap. It's a, a, a game that could be in the eyes of parents and kids both more palatable to that younger Fortnite audience than some of these more grounded and gritty militaristic style uh, shooters are. Gary. I don't know. I, I feel like I've no, offended. So, no, who no, have no, I no, offended? No. I know I've no, offended someone. You've not because I am literally that parent. I don't let my son play Call of Duty or, or PUBG and none of that stuff for exactly what you're saying. Halo, yes. Destiny, yes. You know, he, he's actually not big in the apex, but even that's okay to me, right? But... Yeah, the more realistic ones, the Battlefield, even that as an example. No, I don't I don't let my kids play those games. So exactly what you're saying. I think Halo has an opportunity 
to capture that audience that would be quote unquote parent approved because we're obviously letting them play Fortnite right now. Halo would be another one that I would be fine with my son playing as well. So there is an opportunity that is sitting right there in front of them. We'll see in June, I would assume, um, how, how they're going to take advantage of it. So it's, it's exciting to see. I'm, I'm really curious. It's really fun. And I, I love sharing the enthusiasm about Halo and, you know, the options that this team has in front of them. And, you know, we talk about Halo, but we also can bring it back to Battlefield right now is you have a big moment here to strike while the iron's hot, right? You know, Call of Duty is about to bring it back in the generation and go a little old school with it, which, you know, is nice for a switch up. But a lot of people prefer that modern warfare that we've seen now. It's a really big bump. And we've now gone a full year out in Warzone. We've had a lot of years with Apex, a whole lot of years at Fortnite. And you notice the big trend is what's new and is it hot and can it hold us, right? And Battlefield and Halo are poised to take that this holiday if they can come out with a new hot battle royale on the scene that works well, has the play that you want. And both these games have shown it with their gunplay that they can do it. Now's the time to who will strike and take the mind share of everybody, which will be really exciting to see. But I agree, it's got to be at launch, right? I can't wait six months down the roads. It's hard to get my friends back into it. Just one, just one final, just one yeah. final. You've got me thinking. You've got me thinking about this now, Mike. You got the, you you're, got the you're in turning. It. Keep it going, you baby. Think, you turning, think, baby. Let's go, Gary. <laughs> when I talk about when I talk about being like a whole separate thing, like Activision treats it that way, right? Warzone is a whole separate free to play product. You can download and play for free. Is there is there a reality where Microsoft takes a leaf out of that playbook and says Halo Infinite it has Battle Royale and it's a whole thing that you get? But maybe they maybe they do Halo Battle Royale, carve it out as a separate free to play. Again, if it's all about getting people introduced to the Halo universe, make it you know, do what do what uh, Activision and Call of Duty does with Warzone. Make the Battle Royale version only a free to play download, and all these kids that now flock to it because it's free and they'll give it a try. And it looks kind of like Fortnite or Apex games that they already love, but they. They're looking for something new. Hey, this Master Chiefs guy is pretty cool. I like these aliens. I like this. I like this warthog. Where can I get more like this? Well, guess what? 60 or you know, Game Pass or whatever. There's a whole other game you can get that you know will introduce you to more Master Chiefs. You know, basically, as a, just a way to kind of onboard and put Halo in front of many new gamers as possible. Maybe carving out and making it its own thing, or at least putting it on Game Pass as a separate thing. Uh, maybe a way to to, to 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 you know to try and uh, get as many. Because you have to remember, like a lot, a lot of the kids that are playing Fortnite weren't even born when Halo came out. I've got no idea what it is. They have, they have to hit the Halo diehards, and they have to hit the new generation. That honestly, there's all and so many kids out there. I'm telling you, do not know what Halo is because it's been several years since even the last one came out. They have to reintroduce this to a whole new audience. I mean, honestly, Gary, Xbox loved your idea so much that last year. Uh, they announced that Halo Infinite multiplayer will be free to play. They loved it that much. <laughs> well, that no, but I'm I, no, but I'm 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 I'm, I'm talking I'm talking about marking it out as a separate thing. Mm. Not, but you, well, you, but you still have to buy the game. Yeah, you would still have to pay sixty bucks for the game. I'm talking about you. You just download a thing that's a separate client that doesn't. I mean, if you if you, you imagine whether, if you've, they got, want whether the, you've got Game Pass or not, the multiplayer is free to play. You imagine it's going to have to be a different thing a separate no thing, it, right? no it, it, no it, it just you know, they, they just mean that after you paid 60 bucks there's no additional fee to pay online like that play online like, like they used to be right i assume no. that's what they would that, say that's yeah, not no, what no, they no, mean no, it's so, to play separate. What? no no it is going to be separate because yeah. because that's kind of the whole point here they want to capture the Fortnite crowd, so yeah, you can't call it asking. free to play, but it's yeah. locked behind a sixty dollar thing. Man. Yeah, yeah, no, because no, because they did that precisely because of the backlash about why about how they were going to charge more for Xbox Live to play online, right? And so they said, oh, well, it's not going to be, it's not going to cost you anything anymore. Maybe, maybe, maybe I misread it, but are you are you saying that Microsoft already announced? That yes. Yes. Whether or not you've got Game Pass, you'll be able to download Halo multiplayer for free. Yeah. Correct. Pre, yeah, pre uh -huh. yeah, that was pre. That was pre before we rolled everything back to in the couple of months ago. Oh well, that, well, like you said, my 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 wisdom is obviously so profound that he has traveled <laughs> so, back yeah. in time. You've, I'm I, I'm I'm reading it right now directly here. Halo Infinite multiplayer will be free to play in up to 120 frames per second. Halo right. Infinite's multiplayer mode will be free to play. Multiplayer July mode. 30, July 31st, That's a thing within a game. Yeah, yeah. Well, a multiplayer mm -hmm. mode is not a. I, 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 we're getting tripped up on semantics here, but like a multiplayer mode, not having an additional fee to play online is one thing. Actually, mm -hmm. making the product available for free outside of Game Pass is a it, it, is a different thing. So I'm still confused. 
what I would say to you, Gary, is when you to bring it all back, right? I think everybody yeah. was smiling because when you think about it, right, Gary, this team should be doubling down on this moment, right? Because we've seen seven point five billion dollars for Bethesda, right? Twenty three studios here, a large team, and a whole lot of disposable income. This would be a drop in the bucket if it fails within a year or two. But I think now is the time when you double down after seeing everything you've seen in the mindshare, Fortnite, Apex, and Warzone is when you say, we're going to put a lot of cash behind this. And if you need help from others, if you want to create a whole new studio, whatever you need, we need to make this a success. I would say in my mind, this has to be done. And why not? Right. What what if it fails? That's all right. We keep it moving, it seems like. Right. But why not put a little bit of cash flow or grab a team? I'm sure people would raise their hand to do this, but it seems like now's the moment, especially with the free to play model, like we've talked about. And I believe we'll see. And also on the same time, remember Halo Infinite is a platform now, right? This is what they're calling it. It's a platform. So it'll be very interesting to see what we really look at, whether that be a platform for the multiplayer, a possible battle royale, or even the single player and what that DLC looks like, right? We'll see when it comes down to it. But the platform gets me of, this is going to be something different, and they're going to take a different approach to it. Everybody's staring off working hard. I like that. Let's keep it rolling <laughs> onto some more. I'm trying to get the answer. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know. Let, I, yeah, I, I I'm think I'm the, 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 Gary, the kerfuffle was that, that when it was free to play, you still needed um, – uh, Xbox go Live Gold or whatever to be uh, right. able to play things that that they reverse that, but free right. to so play. That, and, and, and when you so that's the part I was clear on. I thought yeah. when you said Xbox Halo Infinite multiplayer is going to be free to play, meant that they had just removed the Xbox Live Gold requirement, not that they were actually making the whole mode free for people without even having to buy a client, buy a game. What's which one is it? That's where it's, that's where it, I've got the both. confusion. It's both. Okay. okay. I, I have put the tweet out into the world. Source <laughs> the, the, the original <laughs> tweet. I sourced the Halo tweet, and I'm asking the world. Hopefully, by the time we finish recording, we'll get into there it. We go. We're, We're going to get a live. I'll, 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 I'll remember to bring, bring it up by the, by the end of the episode. Uh, let's jump in. Let's keep talking about the free-to-play model because it's now here. The reality is now here. We talked about that after the reversal from Microsoft. So free-to-play online is now live and available for everyone you do not need an xbox live gold account to access online multiplayer with free to play titles remember that's a little catch there let's make sure we hear that correctly right online multiplayer for free to play titles you do not need xbox live gold you'll also be able to access xbox live party chat and looking for group feature which is a really cool thing right here because actually me gary and paris have talked about this before we talked about who's subscribing to Xbox Live Gold, who's on that Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and then who's out there that might not be partaking in any of this, right? Depending on how you play. But it is really interesting when you look at it to actually dial it back and say, well, what is a free-to-play game and how many of them are there? And it would actually surprise you. There's a list now available, and I'm pulling from Kotaku. There's over 50-plus free-to-play titles that you could access to play online multiplayer, ranging from Apex Legends, Neverwinter, Brawlhalla, Call of Duty Warzone, Dauntless, DC Universe Online, Realm Royale, Resident Evil 2, Revelations 2, uh, big one, Roblox here, Rocket League, Rogue Company. And so, guys, this was a big move. This was something that happened after they tried to hike the price up on Xbox Live Gold for the monthly subscription. They quickly reverted that on a Friday evening, and they put in the little line of, we're actually going to drop the requirement of Xbox Live Gold for free-to-play titles now we're here living in this future. How's everybody feeling, Elsie? What do you think about this move? Fantastic move. I mean, this is what I consider reading the room. And listen, we all know when you look at Xbox Live Gold and you look at Game Pass Ultimate as the eventual model that they want to go, right? It, again, the, just the initial messaging just wasn't good. And thus we saw the community, there was a backlash. Like we can't, don't raise that price. You know, it didn't, the optics weren't good. Yeah. And but again, it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing for the companies to be receptive. And this is great PR, you know, for, to have that, that wall, that paywall removed from this service, from true free-to-play games, when your competitors 
are not charging as well. So it, it's a great move. You have all these great games that now people can come into the ecosystem and truly play free to play. And I just love the way they responded. They got ahead of it, you know, and that's all you want. That's This is where I think the community, when they come together positively, don't attack devs, don't spread nobody. <laughs> but when you come together positively and, and you do it the right way, you can achieve things like this. And I know eventually they will figure out how they want to get people from gold over to ultimate because i know that's the end game Ult game pass ultimate that's where they want you to be but this was a very pivotal reverse course that was good to see so i was very excited to see this announcement paris pretty wild i brought up like there's a lot of titles here and we kind of talked about it, you and i and gary of like you know who is doing this and what is this is what is this and i took a moment of reflection after you and i talked about that and it's like wow, you can really get a lot of bang for your buck here now with this service being available for free, right? Like if I was on a low income, if I didn't want to spend money on subscription services, or if I had a set way of like, I buy certain games and that's it. There's a lot of free to play titles here that you could take advantage of and play a lot of hours on, right? I went through it like Fortnite. We talked about destiny two is on this yes. list. Yeah. Roblox I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Roblox again. Roblox is one of the biggest games on the planet. If you don't know, you're about to find out real quick. It's like Minecraft a decade ago when it took over the world. Roblox is quickly taking over the world. And it's just wild to think of like, wow, you save that subscription cost every single month if you didn't want that, right? If I wasn't playing online games, if I wasn't taking advantage of that, I can go over to this and really get some bang for my buck of just buying a console and playing free to play. What are your thoughts now as we look at this, Paris? No, it's a good thing. Um, when they finally announced it, I had even said at the time, it's long overdue uh, because obviously uh, on PC and, and their competition weren't requiring this already for free to play games. So, so I'm glad that Xbox has now joined that initiative of, especially now that you have the low cost option with the Series S, you can pick that up and you can go play Fortnite. You can go play Destiny 2, Apex Legends. Like you brought up Roblox. All my youngest daughter plays is Roblox, right? So trust me, I get it. So, I mean, I'm lucky enough to be in a situation to where I was all really on Game Pass and things like that where it didn't matter. But not all families can do that. And it's nice to be able to say, hey, we're not going to require additional fees for games that were set up to be free for entry anyways, right? If down the road you want to start investing in battle passes and microtransactions and things like that, then you can do that. But the initial entry into these games should be 100% free, even for multiplayer stuff. So this is a good thing. This is a good thing for Xbox players and moving forward, no one needs to make that decision. Do I have to get Game Pass? Do I have to get Xbox Live Gold? No, you can just get the console. You can just download these games for free and you can instantly jump in and start playing. Gary Witta, what do you think? Are we eventually going to see the end of Xbox Live Gold when you break down what it's still bringing to the table and you being part of Game Pass for so long? And you've talked about it, right? Of You've had codes before of this. Like When you look at this now, you're looking at multiplayer for all, free, for all paid online games, games with gold program, free-to-play weekends, and deals with gold. Does that offering still, for you, look at like, hey, this is $9.99 worth it? I've been saying for a while, I hope they simplify it. I think that there's been a lot of, I, 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 and I've said this in a, in a broader context, I don't think Microsoft has always done a great job of, of naming its, its products or, or, or di distinguishing its offerings, you know, all the way down to the hardware, One S, Series S. And we've talked about that confusion. Game, Xbox, but there's Xbox Live, but there's also Xbox Live Gold. There's games with gold, but there's also Game Pass. There's Game Pass, but there's also Game Pass Ultimate. Again, even for people that cover this stuff all the time, it can be confusing. Like, what hope does you know the average you know casual gamer going into you know Walmart or whatever and buying an Xbox? Um, you know, what chance do they have? And we, they, 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 you just imagine the frustration that that this that, that has come up. I've seen it before a million times that like you buy, if, if someone buys a console, they bring it home, they're excited to play, they start to play multiplayer, and a thing pops up. This requires an additional fee. You're like, what the fuck? I just pay sixty bucks for this, and now you, now I got to pay more to like play like the features that were advertised. Of course, there's a small print always at the bottom. You know, online play requires additional blah blah blah. That's how they get you. I think we'll all be glad when this goes away. We live we live in an era right now where like the way that we pay for our entertainment, the way we we pay for our hobbies, TV, movies, music, video games, we're just being nickel and dime with a million different subscriptions, right? How many how many different like recurring subscriptions do you have at this point? Probably I have like I like more than 10 easily. 
YouTube TV, Hulu, Amazon Prime, um, you know, various Twitch subs, Apple TV, uh, you know, Shudder, Criterion, Netflix. It, you know, it goes on and you know, Game Pass, it goes on and on and on. And, they, and it really, really adds up over time. And so I think any time that you can start to, you know, kind of shave that back a little bit and, and you know, get back to this idea that, like, not everything has, you know, has its own additional cost all the time. You know, if it, the multiplayer games used to be free, then they weren't. Now they're kind of moving back towards being free again. I think that by the time you spent a few hundred bucks on a console and 60 bucks on a game, it's not unreasonable to expect that, that, you don't, that they don't get you with even more additional fees on top of that. So... I, I'm hoping we are seeing uh, a trend towards this this stuff kind of going away again. The, again, just from a just from a simplification point of view, again, you want to remove as many barriers to entry as possible. I want to play a game. I want to play it online. I've already bought it. Why am I paying an additional fee? Like we've already we've all kind of gotten used to it, but we're all, we're all also a little bit sick of it, especially as the offerings have become more and more confusing. As we've talked about about again i i don't i couldn't even tell you like what the games with gold are this month i don't even know where to find that on my dashboard i'm sure it's there somewhere uh but game pass has kind of completely you know usurped it and i don't even really bother looking at it at, at it so much uh, anymore and i do think it's confusing there's a whole suite of things that microsoft's offering right now they they really need to i think boil it down to like a couple of simple things we all know what game pass is you get everything uh and just just make it like one maybe two like a regular offering and a premium offering, but just be very straightforward. Sony has this same problem. What's the difference between PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now? I, I challenge you to explain to me, like right now, what the what, exactly what the difference between the two? Because it's it's very it's a model. Like you get some features with this, but not with that, and some with that, but not with this. Like it's the the, oh, the whole thing across the board needs to be made simpler. And and Microsoft in I think consolidating a lot of its offerings and pulling the fees out of some of them again that that's the right move. And I'd like to see more of that across the board. Nintendo, Sony should all be trying to just make this stuff as simple as for consumers. I as mean, possible. Nintendo, you should argue that it's almost too simple and that there's nothing going on on their online services. But well, I mean, but I mean, well, I mean they, always they, well, in they do. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 honestly, Nintendo's the worst because they have Nintendo Switch online, but they also have the family plan, which you'd better be ready to buy into if your kid has a Switch, because otherwise it's a nightmare. Mm. It, like, don't even get me started on this Nintendo <laughs> bullshit. I put a, I, <laughs> don't I get put, started. I put, a, I put a car, I, I put a physical game card a physical cartridge in my switch and i have to wait five seconds while it does a server check to see if the game can be played <laughs> are you are you suggesting i fucking stole the card the card is in the switch why are you what are you checking it's like you're checking my id or something or run, or run, running like a fucking blue or running a fucking black light over a banknote because i tried to give you a hundred at the counter you make you're making me feel like i'm a fucking i'm a criminal i have the cartridge it's there you can see it's physically there Gary, they gotta you know nintendo the they gotta protect the kids to they see gotta if protect this game the can be played. You may as well say checking to see that you're not a fucking crook because it's not it, it, it's it's not cool. I don't like it, Mike. I, didn't I, can't, I, don't, I don't like you're that, Gary. I don't like them calling you a crook, Gary. You're not a crook. Like that, That's Gary. your cartridge, Gary. That's your cartridge. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god. god. I kind of get it. It's still bullshit when it's digital because I get oh we you know, and it's so annoying. My kid comes to me sometimes in tears. Why why can't I play this game? It says I'm not logged into the right profile. An eight-year-old kid doesn't give a shit about any of this. She just wants to play the game. And I and I can't he's like, I, I, like sweetie, I can't explain it to you. I, I don't know why it is this way. I agree with you. It's 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 messed up. It's so annoying. But at least with digital, I get why they have to kind of make sure that the game just doesn't propagate everywhere. But when I have a physical card checking to see that the game can be played let me save you the five seconds yes it can <laughs> play the fucking game wow. Sorry. Yeah, I don't, i'm done i'm done i'm done i'm done i don't know, I'm done. Done. I'm done. I don't know <laughs> i lost it i love it oh my gosh yeah, Gary, yeah. Lit. oh man yeah exactly when you get gary cranked up it's always a good time that's what i every week i hope that we get gary cranked up so it's good that we got him going today i love that let's quickly run through the news before we got to get out of here there's a couple more uh want to call this my good friend the jez Corden block because jez out there putting out some great stuff i even had to reach out to him late last night and just be like you're killing it, my guy. I freaking love it. But he actually put out a big number about Game Pass subscriptions. Way up, folks. All the way up. 23 million subscribers as of April 2021. I highly encourage you to go check out Jazz over on social media and at Windows Central. You can find all of his articles and stuff. But that's a big number right there. So I'm going to pose the question to you guys as we got to keep it short and simple. 
LC, where's this number going to end by the end of the year? We're April now, four months in, almost five heading into May. What's the limit here? What's the, what's the number? Hey, I, I, I would like it to go to 50. Let, let's keep it, let's keep it moving. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, this is, this is the play. This is where they want you to be. Everything, the push for Microsoft is to get, Game Pass is the platform. That, that's where they want you to be. So at the end of the day, you know, when you see this kind of growth, it's impressive. And, and the thing that I like about it is that they haven't really hit their stride yet on the first party scene yet, right? So this is all being done with, with just the, the, the value proposition combined with these amazing third party deals that they're doing. You're seeing games like Octopath Travel, you're seeing Outriders, you're seeing MLB The Show, all these fantastic offerings that I just got a cousin that, you know, he's kind of like the, the prototypical do bro guy. And he's got, you know, he gets all his sports games, you know, he gets all these things in game pass with a series x but it feels like he's getting away with something so i think as the word gets out and as long as they continue to market it this is tremendous what they're doing and i, I just can't wait to see once the first party start hitting and exclude man it, this is exciting stuff so kudos to them this is an impressive number so far paris this number is continuing to go up we've seen it just driving up where do you think it's going to end in another eight months you know i i saw when jez put that out shout out to him because like you said he does he does amazing work but I, I tried to be more conservative with it and and I was saying 30 mm -hmm. and I was but then I asked myself the question what will will if Halo Infinite is as great as we think it's going to be what will that do towards the end of the year so I'm actually going to push it up more to like 35 I think we will probably average potentially around a million a month until mm -hmm. we get to the holiday and then depending on obviously marketing deals and other things along with, with Halo Infinite and whatever other games that are going to be out during that time on Game Pass, I think you could see a surge, you know, um, around Black Friday going to, into Christmas with Game Pass subs, you know, with, with kids getting new new consoles under the tree. What are your partner with? You don't buy a game, you buy a Game Pass sub and you stick that under the tree too, right? So yeah, I think I'd get up to 35 by the end of the year. And then kind of what LC is saying, I think the ultimate goal is to get it to 50, which on that pace, you're probably looking at, you know, probably mid 2022 up in there somewhere. Gary Witta, how you feeling about that? Give me a little prices right in the middle here. What are you thinking? Well, it's it's a very big number and it, it's tremendous growth. The last time we talked about this, I think it was like 1780. Now it's at 23. Like that's a that's a lot of growth. I don't know if they if if um the source that we're getting it, it from explains this, but I would like to know if these are all like fully paid up subscribers yeah, and not just people that thing. are redeeming the code that comes in the box, right? Anytime you buy an Xbox, anytime you buy an Xbox game, there's usually a card in there that will give you a free week or two free weeks or a month or whatever. If as soon as you redeem that code, I guess Microsoft could technically could add you to their subscriber numbers and, mm -hmm. and come up with that really impressive number. But the number that actually is meaningful is how many people actually put in their credit card number and signed up for a period of time and paid or bought, you know, the, the, the card that you get from the rack of gift cards at the supermarket and redeemed it and paid. Like there's a difference between paid subscribers and trial subscribers. I don't know if we have any clarity on, on what the difference here, if they're all thrown into those, uh, into that 23 million number or not. But obviously that conversion is the key. And I think getting just getting people to to try it is a big deal. That's, that's why they put the card in every box because they know that if you try it, there's a good chance you're going to like it, be sad when it's gone away, and then you do put in your credit card number. So there's a reason why they give out those trial codes like candy on every street corner because they really they believe in the product and they know that if you try it there's a good i imagine their conversion rate's actually pretty good i just don't know in that 23 million number which is amazing how if they might be including people that you know put in a trial code but haven't yet really ponied up for it keeping it going another jazz one right here jazz has a great uh interview with one of the my apologies executive producers at mojang studios david nishigan and a big quote that a lot of people are pulling here is about 40% of players that play Minecraft Dungeons on their phone use touch exclusively. And that was a big one there. He also, I really, go check out Jez's work because this interview was a whole lot of fun talking about how they brought Minecraft Dungeon over to the cloud and how easy was it, it was to work with Microsoft, the fun times they had, the stories behind it, and then how they built touch controls for this game. And to hear that number... LC, these guys know I love the idea of cloud gaming. I love being able to play on the go, and I'm really a big fan of the touch controls, right? It saves me from finding that backbone from my backpack. It saves me from carrying around a controller. 
Forty percent of players playing Minecraft Dungeons on their phone touch exclusively touch controls. What does that mean to you with fifty plus touch control enabled games now? Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty impressive number. I was very surprised when I saw that metric. And shout out to Jez again, which those those guys do great great work. Um, yeah, it was surprising. The thing that I, I noticed initially, once I, you know, again, I'm like you, Mike, I, I, I boot that thing up as far as that's cloud and game streaming and all that stuff. And I like to see the marketplace. One thing that I think is very interesting is that you always see that subsection of play with touch. And I notice it increases, it gets bigger. And all I can think of is, look, me, ideally, I'm not going to play my games that way. I'm more traditionalist. I'm either going to use my Razer Kishi if I'm going to use that cloud, you know what I mean? Or I'm going to connect, you know, sync with a Bluetooth to a controller. So that's going to be my method of play. But again, thinking outside the box, thinking of markets that, again, won't use it in that fashion or a younger demographic that is like, hey, I can just use this touch. And, and and have the same type of experience, you know, I think it's one of those things as gamers, sometimes we're in this selfish bubble of like, well, I'm never going to use it, so it doesn't matter. But when you see these metrics come out, it's really telling to me how people are consuming and interacting with these, you know, products. So very interesting number. And I think it's to Microsoft credit to, to keep on, uh, I believe Streets of Rage has the option. Uh, yep. Or, you know, when, every time I, I open that cloud app, I see more added to that. So cool to them for, for uh, looking at for more accessibility options. Paris, what do you feel about the touch controls? Does that take away the immersion? You see it now on Hellblade, right? We've touched on it. It's like Minecraft Dungeons. Oh, that's cool. Some people might call it a kitty game, right? But then you see a game like Hellblade and that has touch controls. What does that do for you of like, you can play this game on the go and still be immersed? Or is that a no go for you? No, I think it's fine because to me, the whole point of the touch controls is adding another layer of accessibility to these games. That's the point of it. So if you're in a pinch, you don't have a controller, you don't have your Kishi with you, right? And you want to start playing it, you can. And that's the whole point of, of being able to do that. It, again, it's just the overall theme of cloud gaming. It's not about this being the primary way that you play. It's a supplement, just like touch controls aren't going to be your primary input device. It's a supplement to it, right? So you could look at it as, oh, it's breaking the immersion of it because you're doing touch controls and like, especially like a game like, like Hellblade, you know, it kind of takes away from that. I get it. But if this is just something that you're temporarily doing because you're trying to advance to whatever next stage of the game, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. I think it's a great thing. I hope more games get touch controls in it. Gary, with a, our final piece of news, I got an exciting one for you because I know you're my dude with that frames per second looking for the buttery smooth SPF, FPS boosted titles. Well, guess what? We got a fun one and it's a lot of EA titles. A nice little partnership going on between these two companies, which is always good to see. At 120 hertz, you can see Battlefield 4, 1 and 5, Titanfall 1 and 2, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, Battlefront 1 and 2, Unravel 2, Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare 1 and 2, and Battle for Neighborville. And at 60 hertz, you're going to see Sea of Solitude. Now, before I let Gary go, I will tell you, MajorNelson.com has the blog post. He actually has a great tracker as well, for all of the games that are now FPS boosted. And it's going to tell you what you will get on your Series X and Series S. It will also tell you if they're turned off by default on the Series S so or Series X. You should definitely go check out MajorNelson.com for this blog post. Then you'll get educated. You can know what has it, what doesn't. Because some of these titles actually are not FPS boosted on the Series S. So something to keep in mind. But Gary, buttery smooth gameplay, EA titles. What are you most excited for from that list? Well, I mean, so as you know, I'm a big fan of the FPS boost stuff. I, I messed around with, like, well, I, I think I mentioned this before, Watch Dogs 2 was a game that I missed first time around. And it had been on, it'd been on back compat for a while, but I'm, I'm kind of a snob, like, well, especially in this period right now, when, when we just got a Series X, like, I want all my games to look like Series X games. I don't want to, I don't want to go like down, like a trip down memory lane and play games with shitty textures. Like, oh, this game's not aged well. Like, I, especially in this period when we're still in the honeymoon glow of the new hardware, I see LC laughing. Like, he's, 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 he's picking up what I'm putting down. I, 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 I just, I just want, I just want the shit to look good, right? Because we just, just bought all this new hardware so it's not usually a great time for me to want to go down memory lane with these back compatibility games but that's what i love about mike they're making them feel like new games again like the fps boost on watchdogs 2 is so buttery smooth that i almost do feel like i'm playing a series x game 
Um, you know, I can go back even further. Mike, you know what, an, what a fan of SSX I am. They did a great job with this on SSX3, which is one of my all-time favorite um, uh, 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 games from the OG Xbox. I probably would not go back and play that again because I just can't get past the whole, man, this has not aged well. Like, you know, OG Xbox games did not, they look great at the time, but they certainly don't look great now. They gave it a nice little glow up. They gave it a high res glow up and they boosted the frame rate. And it and it just, it, it, it basically made a very old game that a lot of people might not want to go back and revisit or look at for the first time. Because again, these games are not aged brilliantly. Just give them a new lick of paint that makes them kind of viable again. Um, and I, and I, it's, it's, it's one thing to make these games available, but it's, a, it's another job. And I think a more difficult job to try and make them, uh, attractive to people to go back. Like, why, why would I want to play all these old games when I've got like newer ones around? Well, we've kind of refreshed it. We've made it new. We've made it look more like a modern title. I think that's a, that's, that's a great way to kind of get some of these classic old games back in the, uh, in the, in the view of, of gamers that might otherwise overlook them. So I'm all for it. Uh, my guy, LC, I know you've been playing a couple titles on this. Tell me all about how does it feel going up to 120 on these games? This, this is music to my ears. Gary's preaching to me, right? He's preaching about <laughs> Star Wars right now. Look, man, I, I, one of the things about the Series X generation that I love with the initial focus was frame rate. Because last gen, don't get me wrong, 4K HDR, it's beautiful. We get it. But when you give me that frame rate boost, and Paris, you can relate, there's nothing like when you see that Destiny hit at 60 frames versus 30. It just hit different. It, it, it's it's beautiful thing. 120 on the PC. 120 on the PC. On the PC. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> it's, like, it's such a transformative experience. And, and to what Gary's saying, when you look at something like Watch Dogs, where I even missed out, it kind of fell in, in, in between the cracks for me. And I'm just like, wow, this is really, with this new hardware, we're pushing it. And shout out to, to the team. Shout out to Jason Ron, those guys. You know, because not only they're doing a great job with game preservation, they're going back into these old uh, games. You hit that Xbox Live button. You see auto HDR. You see FPS boost. You see quick resume. I smile. I'm like, this adds fresh life into these games I love. And I'm a Respawn fanboy. I don't feel they've made a bad game yet. So when I see Titanfall 2 on that list, I immediately dove in. 120 frames per second on my LG CX. It was glorious. Shout out to um Jason. I asked confirm both multiplayer and um campaign confirm 120 frames per cool. second. So I got the conf uh, confirmation from Jason Ronald himself, and it is beautiful. I even went back to your Mike. You gonna like it? I went back to Battlefield Four. Had to had to fire that bad boy up. Yeah, do my evolution, Paris. It's called <laughs> evolution. Get with there it. Here we go. Full full circle. <laughs> it, it, man, it, it was really cool. So again, when I see more titles added to this stuff, it's truly fantastic. It's it's fan service, and again something that the competition is not doing with game preservation as well as making these older titles look great. Shout out to them and, and EA with uh, actually getting this done. This is, this is fantastic. Can I, can I just say so on, on, the, on the topic, on the topic of fan service, cause I am feeling quite nostalgic now. Maybe we've talked about this before. The other thing that I love about the back compat titles on, uh, on Xbox right now is when you launch an OG Xbox game, you get the OG Xbox like startup animation. Yeah. And when you're playing uh -huh. a 360 yeah. game and you pop an achievement, it's the 360 yeah. achievement that pops. Like it's, it, it never, it really kind of like they've, they've done a great job of like preserving the whole experience of playing like a, a game on an older console, even the way all the way down to the things like the way that achievements pop up on screen. I just thought that was a, that was a nice touch. Absolutely. My favorite was Paris booting up Banjo in his tutorial video. He's like, well, this is going to pop up with the 360 here. I haven't logged into the 360 yet, so it's going to be a minute. <laughs> it was just so funny to see him do that. It was great. Paris, a cool partnership with EA. Any titles you want to jump back and play before we get out of here? All right, real quick. Titanfall 2 at 120 frames per second has to be experienced because it is one of the best shooter campaigns ever made. So if you have not played it and you have Xbox Game Pass, do not hesitate. Yeah, I got to do it. I this. feel embarrassed every time I say I've never played that campaign. People are like, what are you doing? You got to yeah. play it. No no well, excuse now. You yeah. know what, Gary? I'll be by your side because I have not played that campaign Whoa. and I will make it a rule for me this week. I will come back next week and I will play it I, I, and right, I will have it. fun. I We're promise you, even if neither one of you finish it by the next episode, when you do, you will unprompted come on this show and sing the praises of Titan. <laughs> Paris, get your people. They got to play it, man. Uh, I love it. Wait, get, us get us in. Get us in. That has... You never me. touched Titanfall 2. What? I played only the multiplayer. Uh, I was such a big uh, Titanfall 1 guy, and we always have to remember, 
that launch of Titanfall 2 was crazy, right? Because they put us in between two yeah. incredible Ooh. games. They did that. Uh, they game. messed that up. The publisher I, did that I, I game only, dirty. Yeah, hey. I can only play so many shooter games. You know, I love shooters, but like that fell in between two big games that were on my list. And it's like, oh, well, one of them's got to go. And yeah. that was the game, you know, unfortunately. Right. But uh, power of this, FPS boosted title, I'm ready to go. So let's end the show with our good friend Paris. Paris, take me to Twitter. Has anybody given us the answer on what the heck is up? With Halo free to play multiplayer. Yeah, so I I kept looking. I was hoping we would get like an official someone from Xbox saying it. No one from Xbox has said it, but okay. everyone is saying what what we were telling Gary that no, it's free to play. That that's the whole point of them getting rid of the Xbox Live Gold requirement for free to play games because they want Halo to be free to play. So you again, not official yet, but as I as I am understanding it, you will not be required to buy Halo Infinite campaign or subscribe to Game Pass to be able to play the multiplayer modes for Halo Infinite. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yep. So I guess our question leading into next week that we'll do some research on for Gary as well is, will this then be a separate app, right? Will this be inside of Halo Infinite somehow? Will this be a separate app? Because Halo Infinite, of course, the campaign will be a little bit different than the multiplayer. So where will this fall and how will this go forward? Very exciting stuff. This has been another awesome episode, laughter-filled, fun conversation of the Kind of Funny X-Cast. We have been joined by my guy, Lord Cognito, the Lord of the Realm from the Iron Lords podcast. Let me give you the rundown one more time because he's a badass dude, friend of the show, and most importantly, he's a gaming ninja. The man not telling you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear, y'all. My guy, Lord Cognito, where can everybody find you? What awesome stuff are you doing? And let's make sure all of the kind of funny best friends can come rally around the realm and hang out with you in the squad. Absolute pleasure. First of all, you guys are amazing. Again, absolute honor to be here. So much fun. You can find me on Twitter at Lord Cognito, Gaming Ninja. And of course, I love podcast every Sunday. It's the Lord's Day, typically 1 p.m. Eastern when it's when it's not football season. <laughs> Paris knows. Paris so, knows. So, you know, we, we, we try to do that, man. Again, you know, celebrate gaming culture and everything that's going on in the industry. Also, if you are a looter shooter fan, we have another podcast with people like Destiny Outriders. It's called The Last Word. It's us, my brother, Ibatis. We do that every Friday. And then off the website, is lordsofgaming.net great opinion pieces kind of for the gamers by the gamers please check it out show some support it's we have a really passionate and eclectic bunch from all over the world and it, it's really cool to see and again salute to you guys this was absolutely awesome i had a fantastic time an absolute pleasure thanks so much lc for being with us and uh send my hype and energy over to lord david i know he could use a little extra i'm sure it's gonna go wild that's right but we have a little fun crossover as well my guy paris Paris Lilly does everything. He's everywhere. He's a journeyman. He's bringing you all the video game news you need to know about. He's on Twitter spaces. He's on Clubhouse. He's on your favorite podcast. But Paris, you're doing some cool stuff later in the week. Where are you going in the weekend? Oh, I'm, I'm going to go join the Iron Lords. I will be there this Sunday live at 10 a.m. Pacific time because I don't do that Eastern stuff. No, we don't do that. 10 a.m. Pacific time. I will be there. And uh, looking forward to this has been a long time coming. And, and the inside joke is I was going to be on sooner, but I was like, wait a minute, 10, 10 a.m. on a Sunday. That, that's football. I can't do that. <laughs> so so we finally figured it out. And uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm real excited. I stealth watch that show live a lot. Like like when they had Jason Ronald on a few weeks ago, it was an excellent episode. Um, but they always have some fantastic conversations going on there and they interact with the community, which we all love here. So i um, really looking forward to it. it's going to be fun. Gary Witta, what kind of cool stuff are you doing this week? Where can everybody find you? What crazy things are you getting into? Uh, I'm not sure yet, but it's easy to find me on Twitter, on Twitch, and on YouTube. It's just my name, Gary Witta, G-A-R-Y-W-H-I-T-T-A. -T -T you guys are the best. Thank you all so much for tuning in and supporting another episode of the Kind of Funny X-Cast, your home for all things Xbox here at Kind of Funny. Make sure to go out there and play a bunch of games. Be good to one another, and most importantly, be safe out there. Peace. Peace.